That trailer sounds one of the coolest things I've ever heard. That's it. <laughs> Welcome back to the kind of funny Star Wars in review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every movie in the Star Wars cinematic universe. This is the last one. Last one so far before before a new one. Woo! Next new, week. New Wait, you next I mean? week? Next, next week. Next week. No. Episode episode nine, nine, man. And that's it. I Saga's plans. over. I got <laughs> <plans>. <laughs> I'm Tim Geddes. That's Andy Cortez. We got Kevin Coelho. We got Nick Scarpino. We got Hello. Bear Courtney on the ones and twos. Oh, BC. He's doing his thing. Uh, that's fun. Shout out to our Patreon producer, Al Tribesman, for helping make this show happen. You can go to patreon.com well, slash well, kind of funny to join the Predator himself. Very close, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> give, 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 give me one more time, what? Kevin. Do it again. Do it again. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you can watch the show live with us on Look twitch.tv <laughs> slash kind of funny games, or you can watch it later on youtube.com slash kind of funny, roosterteeth.com, or podcast services. Just search for kind of funny reviews. Um, like I said, next week we will be reviewing uh, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker Woo! on Friday. Here we so go. Friday, <laughs> Friday morning. Well, I, you know, I'm just not one. ready for it. Yeah, I'm not ready for it. For the I can't. End of it all? Go, it's it's not that it's the end. I'm ready for it to end. It's just there's so much energy that's going to go into it if it's if it's a polarizing movie again. And I just don't know. You've wasted in the last two years. Jesus. <laughs> so much so time. So tired. Wasting. You've been exhausted. I literally had so many arguments with people IRL and online. Where I'm just like, the last Jedi. Then. Oh, my God. Oh, and old. people are still, like, I don't know what it is, but we're, I'm still, I still dig in anytime anyone yeah, starts no, talking about it. It hurts. It's like a visceral thing. I'm, I think I'm in a better away. place now. Okay, good. Good. I think I'm in a better place now. And then uh, we'll also be reviewing Mandalorian episode six mm -hmm. next week or seven. Yeah, which I think comes tomorrow? out Wednesday. Tomorrow. Yeah, well, tomorrow we have episode six. So yeah. remember that, guys. We uh, have to do another one. I'm so ready. Damn. Midnight I mean, they're only like 15 minute episodes. So, <laughs> so yeah, we've got to watch that. And then uh, we'll be doing some Mandalorian six an tomorrow. For this show. Mandalorian seven <laughs> on uh, Wednesday. next Wednesday. Yeah, because they uh, moved it up because of Star They've Wars. been coming out around midnight, right? Yeah. I have no. I I always check uh, at least on the where I have the app uh, downloaded, and every time I check at midnight and it's not there, and then I'm like, "Fuck!" Well, I guess I got to go to bed and wake up early. La last week, last week it yeah. came out at twelve oh five. Um, yeah, I was like, it's, it's around checking. midnight. So here's um, the, here's the thing: I'm Han Solo. <laughs> well, maybe you Andy, I love your impressions, man. Thanks, that was good. That Thanks, was really man. damn Very good, limited. Kev. You got to give him fucking credit. Very limited. Sure. <laughs> give him credit, Kevin. Yeah, Very you limited. get the credit, Thank dude. You. They <laughs> added Baby Yoda to be one of the uh, Disney Plus icons. Very stoked. Oh, oh yeah. that's good. That's uh, keep an Iron Man. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. I switch from. I'm Iron stuff. Man as well. Nah, and I, and, and I gave that? my profile to my dad, uh, and I, we made his um, Bob from The Incredibles. Hmm. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, that is. That's fun. He's he's a Bob. You know. Yeah. He's a dad. Today we're talking about Solo, a Star Wars story, released May 25th, 2018, directed by Ron Howard. I'm Ron Ish. Howard. <laughs> Thank you. Ish. Thank you. Uh, yeah, also semi kind of directed part by directed. Chris Miller and Phil Lord. Yes. And you can tell because every part that had handheld camera, you're like, this is definitely Chris Miller and Phil Lord. And then any part that was like on a dolly or, or a tripod, you're like, uh, that's some old school <laughs> Ron Howard right there. A budget of $300 million. Yeah. A box office. Whoa. Nick, take a guess. Uh, Look, for, for reference, um, Last Jedi was one point three 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 billion. I'm gonna guess this came in around six hundred. So this had a budget of three of three hundred yeah. million, and it had a box office. Yeah. Hold on to your pants, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna hold on to Kevin's pants. Three hundred ninety. Shut the fuck up. No way. Jeez. Is That's that worldwide? A bomb. Ooh. What a weird. Ooh. If you'd have told me, no I'd... way, dude. Oh no, it bombed. Like it. They made headlines when it came out that it was the first Star Wars movie ever to like lose money, and then that's crazy. Yeah. How does it know? It How knew does it. Now? Fuck man, they're really listening. Did it just serve you it an knew, ad? For... It knew that I wanted Solo's box office. <laughs> All I, I typed in box office and like box office Mojo Solo came up. Yeah. Oh my god. Two hundred and thirteen domestic, one hundred and seventy nine international. Wow. It doesn't. That's I mean, it's, good. it's very, very. It's shocking because if you'd have told me when I was a kid that a Star Wars movie was going to lose money, I'd be like, "You're capable out of, your of doing mind. that." Um, it, but I mean, you see it, right? Like when we watched the trailers for this, I was like, "This movie doesn't look all that exciting." And then when the reviews started hitting, and all, all the uh, w with Chris Miller and Phil Lord being pulled off the project, and it was like, "You're pulling another set of Star Wars directors off the project because Gareth Edwards, like famously, was it was murky of, as to what he did on Rogue One." Uh, and then, of course, they, they when they announced that Phil, uh, the Miller and Lord were going to do this, I was like, "That's an interesting choice mm -hmm. for Star Wars. Could be cool, could not be cool." Um, and then midway through, I was like, "This is this is not going to work." And then they bring bring in Ron Howard to basically finish, and you're like, "There could not be two 
diametrically opposed styles of directors than Ron Howard and, and Miller and Lord. Give us the Miller and Lord cut, man. Dude, for real. So here's the I thing. I don't want it. Uh, run, the, the, oh, I, I don't do. want to watch a it. A runtime of two hours and 15 minutes. May the facts be with you a little bit for uh, the background on what you're talking about, Nick. On June 20th, 2017, citing creative differences, Lucasfilm announced that the directors had left the project, the directors being uh, Lord and Miller, uh, people who have worked with on Spider-Verse, on Lego, yeah, most movie, recently Spider -verse. On 21 Jump Street. Most, and again, a perfect example of like, that's a project that fits so well with their style that they can actually get in there and do something really creative with was Into the Spider-Verse. What a great, great movie. A I just, I don't movie? know. If, I feel like that? that should have been that too. A Con Orlando movie could very much have been that, but I, I would love to sit in a room with those guys and be like, what were the creative differences? So it was reported that the directors were fired after Kennedy and Kasdan disagreed with their shooting style. Lord and Miller believed they were hired to make a comedy film while Lucasfilm was looking for the duo only to add a comedic touch. Lucasfilm also felt the directors were encouraging too much Im improv from the actors, which was believed to be shifting the story off course from the Kasdan script. To appease Kasdan, who was unhappy with scenes not being filmed word for word, Lord and Miller shot several takes exactly as written, then shot additional takes. Lord Miller refused to compromise Compromise on certain scenes, such as filming a scene from fewer angle from yeah fewer angles than uh, Lucasfilm expected, thereby reducing the options available in editing. The duo were also unhappy when Kasdan was brought to the London set, feeling he became a shadow director. The decision decision to remove Lord and Miller was made after a short hiatus in filming taken to review the footage so far. Yeah, it just seems like they're. I mean, again, I think that was an interesting choice, but. If you would have told me they're going to make a zany like buddy cop comedy for a Star Wars, I'm like, I just don't know if that tone's going to fit this universe. You have to have an underlying tone of like seriousness for the, for any of this stuff to work. And I'm not saying you can't infuse comic like comedic relief into this stuff, but traditionally that's what like the droids have been for. And like having your two main characters do that, like they can have fun, witty back and forth, but it still needs to feel like a Lethal Weapon movie, not like a yeah. But a Lethal Weapon movie is is funny, I'd say for oh, the but it's deadly yeah. serious though. It, the humor it is has used... serious moments. No, like, those movies dude, a Lethal are Weapon movie funny. is not a comedy. Those are action adventure movies that have comical elements to them. Go back and watch them again. The only oh, one that's I love the only them. one that's even borderline comedy is four, but one, two, and three are that's like great. The one starts with a woman who's coked out of her mind jumping off of a sure, fucking balcony sure. over death. Yeah. Like that's interesting. And and that's to me like but, that's what's sad about this is you get touches of the, that comedy in there, but then the rest of it is played so safe that it just doesn't work at all. Let me let me have the the podium for a minute, okay guys? Take let me the podium, let me give dude. you let yours. me give you my on there, Andy, dude. can you help him climb up onto the podium, please? Let me give you my pitch on how I would have changed Solo to make it something that I would have enjoyed. Not watching. cast Alden Ehrenreich. That's one part of it. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. Okay, obviously a lot of revisionist history going on, a lot of ch changing that's just impossible. But here's what I would have wanted that I think taking what we got, changing some things, would make it good. Don't put it out six months after the most divisive Star Wars movie of all time. Oh, that they didn't have a choice with that one though. That was like that put was it out land. as a Disney Plus series, where every episode is Harrison Ford telling his child Ben Solo <laughs> stories of how things happened. Where every episode was titled "How I Got My Blaster," "How I Got the Millennium Falcon," "How I Met Your Mother," <laughs> whatever it is. You get? <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? And Challenge then, accepted. all of a sudden, there's a framing putting put around why we needed to be ex like every single thing that ever happened that we knew about Han Solo needed to be explained. And then, guess what? It's not directed by Ron Howard. It is directed by uh, Lord and Miller. Yeah, and it is comedic because it's Han Solo telling the stories. So some of the shit could be played up or different than it actually happened or whatever. And then we can get some fun things. Having said all of that. We still don't have an episode called "How I Got My Last Name" because that's stupid. Mm. Even no matter how much do we have four episodes on how I got my dice? Because uh, I really want to know that. I really no. want to know what, why, how we got these. You probably, you probably. They're wouldn't. just so important in this movie. <laughs> you want well, there's, there's, oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Can I hang them on my thing? Yeah, there you there's go. There's nothing there that your current you girlfriend wants to remember you by more than uh, your thing that you had with your ex girlfriend. Yeah, you know. So that was a, that was a great great call. They love for it. Sure. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, say, like jokes aside, like I feel like that would have been a very cool series that I would have been interested in because it, it like I, I wouldn't complain about all of the like oh great did he need to be Chewy did he need to give him a nickname did he need to do all that if it was played a little bit more like. The nickname part was so stupid. Holy I mean, what? I, there's a lot of dumb stuff in this movie. I, I, I will be really, I will be really excited to watch ten years from now, fifteen years from now, the a doc a three part documentary series on the Disney plus or the Disney era of Star Wars, 
and the highs and the lows and all of the back and forth between Miller and Ka- Miller and Lord and Kazdan. I think it's going to be super fucking interesting. This movie, upon rewatching it, this is the first time that I fully rewatched it since we saw it in theaters. For the first time, we sat at this table and this table and uh, reviewed it. I, I I liked it more this time around, but only framing it because we've. I've been so bummed out about Mandalorian, and I think watching this, I'm like, ah, fuck. This is like actually not terrible, <laughs> but it's still. I, I think <laughs> it's this still is, not good. But I think this is the most unremarkable Star Wars yeah. mm, ever. Yeah, where I, I think the biggest sin it, it it commits is that I don't think it does anything incredibly awesome or anything super fucking terrible. I think it's just kind of middle of the road and. Uh, there's nothing super, you know, again, remarkable about it, I think. Yeah, I think when, like, the droid is the most compelling character, like, there's something wrong, you know? Um, I think I think that there's a lot of bare bones. Like, the skeleton of this movie is there. I hate that the dice are on your mic. Yeah, it's, it's, I love I mean, it. They're important. Yeah. <laughs> Incredibly important. <laughs> yeah. Okay, as is every small thing they decided to, na- to do in this movie mm-hmm. that just did not need to happen. But the thing is this. Like, as a heist movie, as a Western, I was like, okay, the, 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 the skeleton's here. We've laid a decent enough foundation. It's just unfortunate that it was horribly miscast. It's not that it's like, the writing's very generic, but like every Star Wars movie is generic. And most, let's put it this way every most marvel movies are generic it's 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 what the character the actors bring to the roles it's what the arcs have like that i'm just saying like plot wise most of the stuff is pretty pretty much just like middle of the road stuff it's that it's the actors that come in that elevated it's the directing that comes in the elevator it's the it's how they uh, uh, approach the choreography of what's happening that's that makes it that much more special and in this they just couldn't find a way to make me care about Anything that was happening here. There are scenes where a young Han Solo and a young Lando Calrissian are across a table for each other the first time, and I am fucking so bored. I am so bored with this because even the game they're playing looks fucking boring. And they don't even bother. They kind of explain it to you a little bit. Like I get it, it's poker. Yeah. But then they're like, none of these, none of the characters do. The only character that I find fascinating in this at all, actually, there's that's two, probably one of my favorite is the whole game scene is it yeah I, 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 was like, I just like the back and forth between him and lando i, th- I think Man. it's i think it's the yeah the whole land the hand stuff is i, kind of I thought that was funny yeah yeah i, I thought it was it another yeah. unnecessarily explained thing like why do we this movie explain like seeks to explain things that nobody actually cared to have explained <clears throat> unlike rogue one where you're like oh you picked one thing that was a little bit of, a, of an issue in the first one, and you made that an awesome thing, right? Which was like, how do, how could they have possibly built this one little defect in there? They explained it, and that became like this really, really core foundation of how to tell that story in Rogue One. In this, it's like, uh, guys, it, that's, it, the answer to why he's called Han is that fucking Billy D. Williams didn't know how to say his name correctly on set, and no one corrected him. That's the fucking answer. Yeah, Not that he was it, being a dick back in the day. Like, we don't need the answers like, to these stupid questions. I, I think it, that that particular line, I thought it was funny that he is being a dick, and, like, that kind of, that through line continues to, like, you know, they're older, and he's like, ah, I keep mispronouncing your name, because it's funny. But it's, it's, but it's retroactively going back and fixing things that don't need to be fixed, is all I'm saying. Yeah, but uh, like, and that's what the, that's what the the core of this movie is. Yeah, I thought you, you, you were saying that there references that don't need two to be characters made. that you liked. Who were they? Uh, I really liked. Uh, I like Paul Bettany's character in yeah. this. Me too. Because Paul Bettany, I thought, brought something very very sinister to the role, yeah, where he's kind of your best friend that's got a knife to your neck the whole time. I love that. I love every scene he's in because he basically, and it's unfortunate because I don't like anyone else in those scenes. But um, he, I thought, knocked it out of the park, and I really just I got a soft spot for Woody Harrelson. I love everything Same. he does. Yeah. And, you don't and like him L3? as Beckett, no, I don't like L three. Oh, I love L three. Uh, but I mean, I don't like L three because I feel like K two S O did it better, and I just felt I thought that character was a little bit le- more subdued. This one, it's fine, but then she dies, and we're like, oh, are we supposed but to? But she doesn't for that? die. And Instead, doesn't the absolute die. worst thing happens, where she's this ro- uh, she, android that wants to be liberated, and then she gets stuck inside the Millennium Falcon. For- how the Millennium Falcon get a computer? Oh, that's how. Yeah. That probably is the question that people asked even less than how to get his last name. Well, it, that that comes from like the what C3PO when he integrates into the Millennium Falcon for a minute and it's like, "Oh, that has a weird accent." Right? And it's like, it's like oh, great. Okay, I, I liked L3 a lot, but yeah, with Woody Harrelson, I loved him. For I loved oh, the I'm George sorry. movie, but you're talking I, about I being, apologize. I like three characters. I liked him, Woody, uh, uh 
Paul Bettany, Woody Harrelson, and I fucking loved Thandie Newton. I loved that she was, or Tandy Newton. I loved their back and forth. And I was like, when I yeah, first watched that movie, I was like, this is going to be awesome. She's going to be like a surrogate mother to him, and they're going to have this cool relationship. And I hope she doesn't die in the first 25. Oh, she's dead. Yeah, so you what earlier were saying that do. it's just generic writing, that it's like not that bad. I think it is that bad. And I feel like a, a perfect example of that is the, it's not just the characters and the acting, because it's the dialogue and Sorry. writing that goes with it. Where, not the writing, the, with, actual, the actual plot. But with, I thought with, was but fine with Woody, enough. with Woody Harrelson, where it's like, the, we the just have a scene scary. of how much he loves this woman, like how much he actually cares about them, and it's like, you're, like you need you, sometimes you do need people, even him, whatever. She dies, he moves on immediately, immediately, <laughs> immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Like gets mad at Han for like th- there was no. He's like, go straight, dope. Like we need to get this, and it's like you have the feeling of like she died for this. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to make sure we get this thing. You fuck it up, Han. We land on this thing, and instead of uh, Woody Harrelson at all being like, fuck you, yeah, fuck you, you just ruin everything. He's just like. All right, cool. <laughs> what? All right, cool. You go free, and I'll go get killed by this dude. See you later. And it's just like that to me was yeah. the turning point of like, oh, this is this is actually bad. And it's it's too bad because I feel like Woody Harrelson could have nailed that. Like, if that beat had been him furious, being like, "You fucked it all up. Not only is she dead, but like she died for nothing because we lost it all." Also, imagine if he said the fuck. If he said fuck, that'd <laughs> been cool. Woody yeah. Harrelson saying fuck. fuck yeah, I, th- I throughout a lot of the movie where Woody Harrelson is on screen, I'm thinking, fuck, if this were just about him. About Woody Harrelson. Yeah. If it was just about Woody Harrelson versus Paul Bettany, and you didn't ca- and you didn't have Amelia Clark in there, who I just think is not great in this either, and Aldrin Ehrenreich. She's not as bad as uh, I, I think want fun. to say yeah. she the is. Sad, <laughs> the sad thing is this. She just has absolutely zero chemistry with all the, with the Han Solo character. And I just and I hate to keep harping on this guy, because I'm sure he's a perfectly nice person, but he just is it's like watching paint dry anytime this guy's on screen. And it would be okay if he was a side character, but he's the main fucking character. I don't have, I can't fathom what he did in that screen test or who the fuck he knows that they put him in that room with, with of all people, Donald Glover. And someone was like, yeah, you guys got it. I mean, Donald Glover is one of the funniest fucking, like, most genius fucking p- actors of our and time. And he's got the charisma. And he you has know? the charisma. Yeah, he and reminds they cast, me of young Lando. They cast Putty opposite of him. It's, they were just like, put a piece of molding clay opposite of him, and he'll just carry the whole fucking thing. I was it reading, didn't work. I was reading the trivia, and apparently he was the first person that they uh, took to like check out that role. And then every other person that they would like uh, audition, they were like, oh, it's not as good as, as Alden. Alden. Yeah, and it's just like wow. interesting. He must have nailed like those few lines. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, you know. I, I, m- my thoughts on some of the characters upon first and second rewatch – the first time I always thought, eh, everybody's overreacting about this Alden guy. He's fine. I don't think he's a problem. I, uh, upon rewatching, I'm like, yeah, I think he was not great. Um, and also, I didn't think uh, um, Donald Glover was great the first time around. This time, I really liked him a lot more. And L3, I enjoyed her much more this time around. Um, I remembered her being a different character. I don't know why my main my mind painted her to be like some. Fucking some, something completely else than what she actually was. And upon rewatching, I was like, oh, I actually do like kind of her bullshit. I like the whole liberation <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, it's it's stupid, but I, I enjoyed it. You know? uh, do, do you guys know who the actress is that did that? Mm. It's the Fleabag actress, yeah, right? Yeah. Main, I don't forget her name, but she's she's the shit right she's now. Got, like, I would have loved to see L3 in a different movie. The Marvelous Miss Fleabag? Some, similar, yeah. <laughs> What's sad is that they, when they were talking about casting, I, I, if I remember correctly, Taron Edgerton was up for the role of Han Solo. And I think I would love to that see what cool. Taron Edgerton uh, and Donald Glover could have done together on screen because oh, he yeah. is actually a very good actor mm-hmm. um, and a great comedic actor, as we saw in Kingsman. Like, I think he can carry – Kingsman is the perfect tone for a Han Solo movie where it's fun, it's whimsical, but it, it's got great action pieces, but it's just that this shy of like – of of believable and the world is like believable serious, and it's fucked it. yeah you know dark, yeah. and I think that they could have gone for that I think he could have absolutely nailed that especially um, opposite of Donald Glover but yeah. it's just we'll never know also well, his his we'll hair clearly cannot curl up in the back let's like let's let's get a wig on him we need a we need a wig to be in you know to be on that goddamn skull of his because his hair in the back is just like a puff are you talking it's about just, Taron Edgerton yeah or? no 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 uh, oh, uh, Alden uh, Aragorn Aragor. Aragor. like, it's just a puff in the back like, I mean there's let, no nuance I'm gonna to it. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna stop you right there <laughs> no nuance I'm gonna stop you right there because the one thing this guy does have is fucking great hair no 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 oh no, my no God, but he doesn't hair. have great Han Solo hair is what I'm saying nobody has great Han Solo hair they gave him a scar on his chin 
Because Han had, had a scar on his chest. I'm surprised they didn't have him uh, w jump into a fucking uh, uh, train car with a, a lion in it and have him pull a whip off and then go Psh, and give himself the scar. Because that would have been a great nod to that one time it happened in the other fucking series, uh, Indiana Jones. You, I'm yeah. confusing you guys right now, but yeah, that yeah, actually yeah. happened in, in uh, yeah. The Last Crusade. So here's the thing. I'm, I'm just surprised that that's <laughs> another thing they didn't <laughs> give him a fucking reason or another <laughs> needless <laughs> reference that they explained for no reason. Yeah. Let's get. Right. I didn't think the movie was that bad. I was. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, did it? Yeah, you didn't think, really or you did think? I did not think. No, I. I uh, again, this is the only movie I've, I didn't rewatch in theaters. The only Star Wars movie I haven't rewatched, and uh, I, I also thought it was just it's super dark. Like even. Oh no! You don't. You don't mean some... dark tonally. You mean legitimately. You can't see scenes. Yeah. Yes, including the first scene here. There are multiple times in the this that I wrote. The first scene I'm okay with because that's the point. Yeah, I, I they're think in that's, the dark. That's the point. But, but I think there are several scenes throughout other, the whole movie. Yeah. So, but there's a way to shoot darkness so that you get that it's dark, but you can still see what's happening in the actual frame. In this one, it was just colored horribly. The whole movie yeah, is colored the terrible. Colored. And here's and here's how I know Not it's and here's how I know it wasn't my TV because my subtitles were the fucking br so bright. <laughs> when my when my <laughs> subtitles would pop up on screen, they're like the cr most crisp white thing in the. <laughs> oh my god! Every time they pop up, like oh fuck, it's so bright. But everything else is just so. I watched the, the, I watched the first like twenty minutes at a Starbucks while I was waiting for my wife, and it was wall to wall windows, and I could not see what was happening on my screen because it was so much brightness coming through yeah. my eyes just would not adjust I was like I was trying to do this on the screen it was fucking I terrible I got like a VR yeah like, I was like I can't that's, I don't so, that's so funny because I didn't have that problem at all but I, I also used the my hue lighting thing so like my whole room adjusts to it so when the scene is dark Everything gets dark. Uh, I mean, I watched just... the movie in a pitch black room, and it, it, I still had some issues. This was a criticism when it came out as well. Yeah. And it's, again, it's a, it's a nitpicky criticism, but it is true. Like, if you can't tell what's happening in this, it reminds me of when I saw Batman, uh, the 89 Batman in theaters. That was a huge criticism. Then they colored it so dark that Didn't they when have it, to re Yeah, they had to go back and recolor it when it went to VHS. Yeah. Anyway, let's kick it off, ladies and gentlemen. Han Solo. I'm Han Solo. <laughs> a Star Wars story. Uh, we don't get one of the, what are they called? The crawl, is what we'll call it. I call it the scroll. Let's call it the crawl. The crawl? I mean? Great movie. How do you feel about that, Andy? Nick Kroll. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It's a lawless time. Crime syndicates compete for resources, food, medicine, prophylactics, hyperfuel. It's madness. On the shipbuilding yeah. planet of Corellia, Lady Proxima runs shit. And with the help of those lovable runaways, she just got a little group of scants. Lady Prax Proxima is so scary. She's scary because she's, she's a big worm. She's a big sneak. She's a big old like worm. Ugh, when she goes to attack him, I'm like, ah, like it's so gross looking. Man, Han hijacks a sports car, but you wouldn't know it because this scene's real dark. Maybe he's <laughs> on, an, on an actual horse. I don't fucking know. Um, and this movie kicks off with him having already stolen the car. So we don't get a great scene of him. Uh, he tells us that what happened, and you're like, oh, that would have been cool to see. Like, you know, you get screwed over by these people, uh, and you, you figure out a way to hijack this uh, coaxium from them, and then you steal their car also. What a Han Solo thing to do. No, we just start with him in the car. I think that's fine. It's whatever. Well, he's keep, a that, keep that in bro. mind as a lot of this movie goes along. <laughs> a lot of characters are just talking. Uh, after uh, owning the car for about five minutes, he decides it's finally time to put his own personal touch on it by adorning it with none other than these sweet gold dice. Where did he get them from? Maybe we'll get that explained to us ad nauseum later in the movie. Uh, back at the orphanage, all the little scamps fight over the daily spoils. Uh, Han meets up with the mother of dragons and tells her to keep that he kept some coaxium for, for them so they could sell it for 500 credits and buy their way off out of the control zone and off Corellia forever. And I love it when characters are oddly specific about the plot of the movie. Man, because they were just like, here's exactly how we're going to do this. And you're like, I bet it's not going to happen oh, like that. It's not going to work out. Yeah. I don't so, understand how anyone could watch Kind of Funny in review and be mad. Like, oh, they, they only, they just, they're nitpicky and they should. Nick, you're so good at this goddamn plot. Like, I just watched this fucking movie and I'm here for this ride. <laughs> I just want to hear. What did Nick Scarpino <laughs> we'll from this dice. goddamn movie? Yeah. I love it. Would you like to borrow my dice? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling when, lucky. This when Nick, it. like, remakes a scene, I love it so much. He's, he's so talented, you know? Oh, I love you guys. Uh, Some of Proxima's goons find them and take them to Proxima, I think, again, but I don't know because this movie's so fucking dark they could be at the goddamn Yule Ball from Harry Potter for all I know. It's so dark in this scene. Uh, let's see. Proxima is mad because Han messed up. Uh, there must be some consequences for disobedience or you'll never learn. And he goes, you know what? I don't think I'm ever going to learn then. And then uh, Kira steps in and, and, and she goes, she tries to save them but she has no leverage. Instead, Han tries to pack, pass a rock off as a, a thermal detonator. And that's kind of indicative of this whole movie. This in was, a nutshell. This was such a Lord Miller scene though. It 
Like did the, not work. Pretending the rock is a, a doing like the clicking it. noise and all that. Like that's it's such their thing. Okay, you know? it was a fun little moment. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, Proxima is no no fool. She's like you're clearly holding a rock, and he's like, "Am I?" And then he throws the rock through uh, the glass, and it turns out Proxima is a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> did you know that too? Yeah. <laughs> it's Blade <laughs> Two all over again. Yeah, dude. Here we are. The, the sunlight hits her, and she goes, ah! and then has to go into the into the water. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, there it is. Uh, let's see. And then they jump in his cool new M68 speeder, which Kira loves. And this, it's great. She's like, this is a great car. We're, everything's going to be great. We're just being chased by a oh, giant great. mythical Tank. sea creature, but it's all good. It's going to be great. And in a few, like in a month or two or however long, like I'm going to just pretend I don't know you. But, like, even though we have this deep relationship I just hate that whole turn. We'll get to that. Well, here's here's the plan, Andy. Let me tell you. We use the coaxium to bribe our way through the checkpoint and get on a ship, and we're free. And Han's going to be a pilot. Han's going to be a pilot. How, how Han? Here's here, here's a, a striking thing. If you guys are writing a Star Wars movie out there, can I ask for one quick little favor? If your character has only ever driven a car, don't make him a pilot. Don't make him. Don't give him the skill to be an amazing pilot just off the bat. Show me at least him going through the trials and tribulations of failing at being a pilot first and then succeeding. Because I drive a Honda, okay, Tim. Mm -hmm. Does that make it okay? What if I just said I'm going to be a pilot and then jumped in the cockpit of the Boeing 747 that was taking us to London? I was like, guys, I got this. You're not Han, though, man. We do see him. We do see him do some fancy driving with his car and driving all around. Is exactly like flying. But how do we know that? How do do we know that he's never been on a a ship before? Well, again, another point. One of those is if he had been on a ship, why the fuck would he come back to this planet? You think he's on a ship? He's flying on a ship. You just fly the fucking thing away and never come back. When he joins the Empire, they tell us that he was a pilot for a little while. They do. Not how long. They don't show us. They just (laughs) tell us Uh, before they can pick out the paint colors for their space condo. The bad guys catch up, and a car chase ensues. And soon. Imperial Highway Patrol catch catch wind and they try to pull Han over. So he runs one over. But don't worry, this is a Disney film, so they make sure to show the trooper is just fine. He gets up, he's like, "Well, that was a bad Dude, day." That, that speeder was fucking dope. It bro. was dope. That was a really cool. I, one of it. my uh, biggest like movie sins is when a chase scene isn't fun. It's like, how do you make the coolest thing in the world not interesting? You know what was a cool chase scene? Hmm. Oh, freaking uh, 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 Hob- uh, uh, Hobbs and Shaw with the motorcycle. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, was that was fun. With the, the transformer. Remember when he awesome. goes through the car, and, like, <laughs> and, like, or the and van? And then Kevin bus, laughed it, really yeah. loudly. It was, really, it was like a goddamn cartoon. I loved it. <laughs> well, anyway, this guy's okay, and guess what? He'll probably get some paid time off. Uh, and, and then Han pulls a Han, tries to pull a Han Solo and pilots the speeder through a, just a really tight passageway, but he gets it stuck. Oh, no, he's not quite Han Solo yet because this one didn't work out. Maybe we'll see this later in the movie. Maybe it will work out. Uh, So they walk the rest of the way because that's exciting. Uh, Once they get to the station, they stand in line for a while, and Kira starts to freak out because at least uh, here he's like – she's like, at least on this planet we have protection. Out there, we can get snatched up by smugglers and and sold into some sort of weird Thailand sex trade. And then Han tells her to just fucking – I hope that doesn't happen to me. (laughs) Han tells her just to fucking chillax and gives her the golden dice again. And he's like, here, have these golden dice. And I'm like, does he just have pockets full of these things that he just gives to every girl that he meets? He's like, these are my special golden dice. And then goes back into the box of like printful stuff that he has we saw him pull, more golden we, we dice saw him out. pull it off the ship as it like got stuck. He just bought a shitload on Etsy. He's just got them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they reach the front of the line uh, and they try to make a deal with the ticket seller to give her the coaxium for passage. But before they both get through, uh, Kira is nabbed by some stormtroopers and the gate closes, cutting them off. And Han's like, no. And she's like, go. You got to go. You're the only one of us. You're the best of us. Get out of here. And he's like, OK. OK, cool. I, th- I think that, I think when when he is yelling, he is at his best. I think it's the the most convincing. You mean when he's showing emotion? I think it's the most convincing line delivery that yeah. he has whenever he's yelling and kind of like the angry and emoting that way. But when he's just subdued and trying to be charming, I, it rarely works for me. Uh, with no other option, Han steals a bunch of clothes from random people who apparently don't notice and sneaks his way over <laughs> yeah. to the luggage area. Stole a hat, stole some shoes. Andy, if socks. you were wearing a hat, Kevin, <laughs> if I stole the hat off your head, wouldn't you be like, yo? At well, the very fuck. least, what the fuck? There's a family of five that turns around I'm like, where? <laughs> no, I get what the where scene, my pants go. I get the scene was supposed to show that he's like clever and like resourceful and quick yeah. and quick, but eh. anyway, uh, as he watches the stormtroopers close in on him and say a lot of fun generic lines, he sees an advert, as they say in London, uh, to join the Empire. 
with the and Imperial I, March theme. With the Imperial March theme. Yeah, which so is meta. A little too meta. And then <laughs> no, also, that's fucking cool. Well, yeah, here's my question for you guys. Okay, he's made it through security. He's already bought a very expensive ticket off this planet. He has resources. But you figure if you are already through security with a first class ticket, why would the ad to join the military that gets you out of destitute, why would that be through security? Wouldn't you want to put that outside of security for everyone that's looking through and goes, fuck, I can't get off this planet. I wish there was an alternative that could fucking somehow give me a release from the hell that is Corellia. Oh, I'll join the army. Now, granted, I like this idea. I like the idea that the Empire would go to these like poverty-stricken planets and recruit people who are desperate. But like, man, your recruiting thing needs to be on it. like on Market Street. You know what I mean? It needs to be on 6th and Market, not in the marina. Yeah. All I'm saying. That's a good call. That's a very specific reference I, for people who live in San Francisco. I really liked the uh, Imperial March theme playing. It was, like, like, it was it, a the, major, the major key. key yeah, yeah. Like the diegetic sound there of it, like they actually hear it. Like that's cool to me. Yeah. Like makes sense. Uh, of course, he's seeing no other option. He's like, hi, hey, I'll just join the Empire. These guys will get me right off the planet. That'll be great. And he, when he goes up, he goes, the guy, he's like, uh, what's, who are you? And he goes, I'm going to be a pilot, the best in the galaxy. And the guy's like, yeah, okay, sure. I hear that a lot. And he's like, how do I become a pilot? He goes, well, most, most people uh, uh, just join the infantry, but I guess you could join the Imperial Navy for that, and it's going to take a while, so we're going to need a montage. And then he's like, we don't have time for that montage. We're just going to show you after you failed already. And they have one throwaway line where he's like, well, if you're really good at following orders, you could be a pilot. And Han's like, I'm not good at following I'm orders. Solo. So that explains why we got nothing of him actually learning how to be a pilot in this. I'm Han Solo. And then the guy's like, cool, well, you have to put your name down. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you have to put your name down on this paper. What's your name? Han. What's your last name? I don't have one. Now, well, Spanish exists in this world. Right. So. Solo. So you're by yourself. So you're solo. Han Solito. Han Solo. <laughs> I love I love how the guys like this. Huh. No people. I was pretty smart about that. Yeah. I'm gonna put yeah. solo down. You think you're gonna put Han alone down? That doesn't have the same ring to it. Han also, alone. I do want to ma make note of the fact that Han does in fact have a dad, which he makes reference to later in the movie. Did the dad not have a last name either? Do these people just not have last names? Well, I just don't understand. I don't understand where this happened. Because it's like, you know, we, it's easy to look and be like, oh, Ron Howard, or oh, Miller and Lord. It's like, was this a Miller and Lord thing that they hadn't figured out the punchline yet? <laughs> uh, they were just like, oh, I guess we're just going to keep it in here. We're just going to play it off. Like, this wasn't funny. No. This wasn't This wasn't anything. Yeah. No. It was yeah. just very annoying and Such stupid. a throwaway moment. Anyway, cut to three years later, and Han is in a war zone, and it looks like the opposite of flying. He spots Beckett and his people who are pulling a job. And Han has a question. You want to live, Sparky? Then shut up and do as you're told, is what Beckett tells him. And he's like, man, I don't think you're a captain. It's kind of crazy. And then they run off to fight the enemy, and then it cuts to later. So this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about in the action of this movie. It's just like a little bit of setup, and then there's just no payoff in this scene. Because we would think that they would see them do something cool, but no nothing happens. It's just a bunch we of explosions. We do get that cool moment of Woody Harrison just like being the gunslinger, and it's like, oh, that uh, that's rad. Yeah. Would have been cool if he actually like did something with that. It's he just shot literal. A couple people. Yeah, we did he? I don't know. He just yeah. shot into the distance. We kind of saw some stuff. I don't we know. Saw people fall. Anyway, uh, let's see. Would have been uh, would have been cool to do, uh, for Han to do something heroic here, or maybe Beckett, or maybe anyone do something cool. I, you know, I'll, I'll skip through here. I got a whole paragraph how this scene fell flat. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Fuck. Uh, Han tries to thank Beckett, but Beckett tells him to get as far away from this place as possible. And we start to get the feeling that Beckett and his team aren't who they seem. Uh, Han gets more orders from his superior. They're going to destroy all the hostiles, uh, uh, the hostiles and spread peace and order. And Han's like, this is their planet. Aren't we the hostiles? And his superior is like, you know you work for the Empire, I'm a right? bad guy. Stop being a good guy. Good guy. Like, you know who we are, right? And Han's like, fuck, I think I do know who we are. And I don't think I want to be a part of this anymore. And the guy's like, well, then just go. This is a volunteer organization. You can just leave. You signed up for it. You chose to be here. We didn't put it. Anyway, uh, Han gets, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Han takes his way, uh, talks his way into the crew. Uh, he got kicked out of the Imperial Navy for having a mind of his own. And he's going to be a great member of their team. And Beckett's like, uh, no, you're not. And we don't want you because you're fucking weird and, and you're just a hang around. And then when Becca gives him the cold chiller, Han's like, well, or I could blackmail you. And then he's like, oh, you think you can blackmail me? And then Becca calls it because he's wearing a fucking captain's costume, calls over the people and says, this is a cool deserter. Shit. I love yeah. that. That's awesome. Yeah, that really was good. funny. And Han's like, but fuck, also, I got out. I got out. Thought here. It's 
the the Beckett's line of like, oh, and uh, don't believe anything he says. He's crazy. Is just such a like. All right, cool. Well, it's great because it comes out of Woody Harrelson's mouth. Yeah. And Woody just has that. He has that way yeah. of delivering when things. You where you're like, believe. I just want to hang out. Yeah. With him. yeah. Can we just hang out, Woody Harrelson? I do like the line where he uh, references that Rio has like arms coming out of his back or whatever. Because yeah. Rio's trying yeah, to. Pl- it's so fucking weird. I remember the first time watching the movie, you're like. What, what did they just say? Like that's fucking weird. And yeah. then when you get the reveal later, you're like, oh, okay, that's you, what you that's were what never he was a soldier. Yeah. But you get one shot of him pulling his pants up with his fourth arm, and you're supposed to, but you can't see it because it's so dark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's just also like, can you imagine? Like, is he holding two arms up to hold the helmet in the right place? Because he's much shorter. Yeah, than, he's really yeah. short. He's like this tall. <laughs> so then, how is he seeing out of his chest piece? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Doesn't Andy matter. and I are gonna. I'm gonna get on Andy's shoulders. We're gonna be LeBron James. We already talked about that. <laughs> You're gonna get on Andy's shoulders. Yeah, that's yeah. how we. We're, we're shampoo. We're for gonna. It. We're gonna create a. a well, what we talked about is that we're gonna take a 25 year old Nick from before he ever got married, and we're gonna bring him into the future, into the present time. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna. He's gonna be on my shoulders, and we're gonna make a Tinder profile. And I mean, because, we're just because gonna, women only like tall guys. What? We're just gonna, so we're gonna wear. Be a tall one, what one a tall guy. terrific but waste of time he, travel. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the, here's the kicker. We're just gonna wear a LeBron James jersey. And and not, and if people think we're LeBron James, we're not yeah. going to correct them. Yeah, but we're not going to say we're yeah. LeBron James. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good job bringing a mediocre bit from KFA. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think, that was, I think that was the podcast. <laughs> anyway, throw him in with the beast. We haven't fed him in three days. This is going to be fun. And who is the beast? Him? Chewbacca. Chewbacca the Hookie. That's nope. right, guys. Guys, guys. That name's way too long. No, right. We got to show. We got to find a nickname Why? for you. It would have been. Just a little bit better. He later was like Chewy. He's like, oh, that sounds better, you know, or something. Instead or just of- started calling him Chewy. We yeah. should have done a bit. You don't you- need to explain yeah. why you're shortening your friend's name. I don't call Tim Timothy. I've never once called you Timothy. Kevin does it, but it's just to annoy you. And to be honest, should, I think it's hilarious. We should do a bit where you reach into the refrigerator. You're like Coke Zero. We're gonna just shorten that name. <laughs> CZ. <laughs> I'm, gonna call, I'm gonna call you CZ for now. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, so he gets thrown in with Chewy, and I, th- I think again, really dark. This scene could have been Harry and the Hendersons, for all I fucking know. Uh, anyway, they fight, and while some stormtroopers watch above, Chewy whip, wipes just wipes the floor with them, and then seconds before drowning him in mud, Han uses his high school level Wookiee to talk his way out of this. And man, I wish this really didn't happen because pe- look at look at one of the one of the look fun at, one of the fun charming aspects of Star Wars is that characters just understand each other. They understand the droids. They understand Wookiee. You don't, we never hear them. Like imagine a scene, Tim, in The Rise mm-hmm. of Skywalker, yeah. where bb 8s talking to Poe and Poe turns to him and goes, beep boop ba boo 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 beep boop ba boo beep boop ba boo he said we have to go. <laughs> no, that's stupid, it right? Is, it is. I, I like the Wookie idea of this. This is so I, fucking dumb. The subtitles I, I was o- also. I was okay with it. I just again, I feel like this is the tale of two tones of a movie just clashing. This where is it's like, the mo- had this been more on the comedic side, it totally could have worked. But it went on way too long and just felt, it did fall flat. This to me so is the save Martha of this movie. Because you're like, no. it is. What? It, it definitely is. You, like having a normal character do Wookiee is just, it comes off. It's so like, stupid. It's like every single time any of your friends have ever just randomly pulled the Chewbacca, the Wookiee fucking impression out of their ass at a party. You're like, that works there because we're hammered. Here in a $300 million movie? No. <laughs> yeah, this is straight out of like a robot chicken bit. It's, but it, also, yeah. he understands English. Yeah. We yeah. see other people talk to him. It. And it, so you could have just been like, hey, yeah, well, I got a plan. Know that, I got a plan. Yes. Well, we know it now. Anyway, yeah. his plan is this. Look, we're gonna, there's language a big, connects people. There's a pole that's holding this whole thing up, and I want you to just pretend to kick my ass into the pole until the pole falls down. And that's what they do. And then the stormtroopers fall into that. And I think at one point, oh, no, it's not here, but at one point, should we rip someone's arm off? Because remember that? That's later. That's way later. Uh, let's see. Uh, anyway, Han uh, has a breakout plan, and uh-huh. then and then when he, when he translates, it says by by secret battle of pretend, which almost makes this worth it. <laughs> almost, uh, they fake fight, and Chewie punches support, holding up the makeshift prison, and everything comes crashing down. And Bob's your uncle. Han tells Chewie they got to make it to the airfield so they can meet up with his friends. Uh, Beckett and John Favreau spot them as they're about to take off, and Favreau talks them into picking him up because he uh, he likes sleeping up on on the, all up on that big ass Wookiee lap. He's just like, you ever slept it, in a Wookiee lab? And I'm like, I was single at one point. Jesus. John Favreau's character, really disliked him. Really? really? I feel uh-huh. like all the lines, like, I feel like every line that he has feels 
disjointed and like it's not part of this movie. I feel I like, like I'd, he... I'd prefer to have the guy from Fallen Order, whatever his name. Yeah, Grease, mm-hmm. Grease, mm-hmm. 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 or yeah, whatever. Grease. Gre- Greasy Grease. money, baby. Greasy, Greasy money. money. Fun fact: As I was watching it, this is total non sequitur. Did you know he was originally cast as the uh, Daniel Stern part in Home Alone for the Wet Bandits? Favreau? No, the guy that played Grease. Huh? No. Isn't Didn't, that weird? I like that. Though. Well, they had Daniel Stern first, then he said no because he wanted more money, and then like an idiot. And then they cast this guy, and then, then Pesci didn't like him. So they kicked him out and brought Daniel Stern back. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Uh, off we go. Han and Chewie sh- uh, shower together, and a lot of stuff makes sense now. Uh, Chewie and Han talk, and Chewie tells him his full name, and Han's like, oh, we're going to need a nickname for that. And I assume tells him this hilarious story about how he got his last name. You see, I was being chased by some Imperial soldiers, and then this guy asked me my name, and I said Han alone, and he said Han alone? That's a dumb name. We'll call you Han Solo. <laughs> Man, it would have been so much better if he's like Chewbacca and he's like, all right, cool, Chewie, let's go. And then, or that, just not you know? made reference or just to this not. at all. Or, yeah. Anyway, because, later that. Because, but like, like, if they had to, if they had to have that scene, I just think it would have just been, just d- dumb it. Like, you don't need to dumb it down that much. You know, yeah. the, the fun part about this movie is they didn't have to have a lot of the scenes in this movie. It just didn't have to happen at all. A lot of the scenes in the movie don't do not do anything to push the characters or the plot along. They're just dead weight. Uh, anyway, later that day, they hatch a plan to, ra- to rob, uh, excuse me, they hatch a plan to rob the monorail at Disneyland. Uh, they're going to blow the tracks and stuff, and it's all going to be good, but some other crew might jump on them, and so just FYI, look out for that. That night, they camp uh, by the campfire. Tandy Newton doesn't like Han and Chewie. Uh, she, wants to, she wants to cut them. She thinks they uh, should get some real help, like Bosk. Remember him? Remember that character? I'm fine. That's the. Let's type make of a reference, reference to Bosk. Yeah, Boss. I see. I I also like enjoy those subtle references of like, oh, cool. Like I don't because every time they make a reference like that, it makes the whole universe. It's starting to make the whole universe feel very thin and very small. Because whenever there's only five characters that do anything in Star Wars, you're like, how how big is this galaxy? Is it really that small that that Bosk is like that? I don't know. Or I guess I guess good, he would be popular. Is Bosk, you know. Yeah. I, mean? I, I feel yeah. like it's That's, okay when yeah. it's in like. There's a list of things, and Bosk is one of the things. You know, that's fair. we didn't know the other things that they named. Han tells him he's well. Wait till the next solo. They'll make reference to this. There's Han not tells him the next solo. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, he's doing all this for his Dude. girl. He swore to himself he'd become a pilot, get a ship, and go back to her as fast as possible. And it's been three years, so you know she's going to be exactly in the same place as where he left her. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe just get money. They uh, anyway, it really. Really like the relationship between Val and Beckett. Here, I wanted to point that out. I put a note there. Uh, uh, looking forward to seeing them progress throughout the movie. Hope she doesn't die very, very soon. Uh, <laughs> Chewie is looking for his tribe of, or family or, or whatever. There's no difference. Um, Beckett has a heavy blaster. Remember that? So he gives it to Han. Uh, now we know where he got his name and his blaster. And those and his best friend. And his best friend and the dice. The fucking dice, <laughs> man. I've been wondering. Wait, we still don't know where actually those dice came from. Maybe they can do a prequel where Han is 10 years old and wins them in a high-stakes pickup sticks match. That'd be thrilling. Wouldn't that be amazing? Anyway, the heist begins. I actually like the heavy blaster like being a larger gun that he like took apart and made into a small... Because it's like a powerful gun, and now it's like, all right, cool. There it is. But it's just like every scene has to have a thing that explains where Han got something. Like it's just Everything we we know about Han Solo in three movies... Happened within three days. Yeah. Very weird. Anyway, uh, the heist starts, three and years, to be fair, it's dope as fuck. Yeah. Them attacking this train as like an old western. Like Very fucking cool. I think it's cool. I Great like a lot of the choreography in this. The entire way through. Very cool. Not uh, great security on the train, though. No, I love the security. magnetic shoes. Yeah. When they got standing on the side. It's, uh, it's, yeah, I like it's, the tethering. It's beautiful to look at. Yeah. But I think the... Bright. The, see the what's mu- happening. Yeah. The music gets really cool. Uh, uh, with the little kids chanting. The heist Creepy. begins. It's dope as fuck. They're stealing coaxium. Uh, that's the main MacGuffin of this movie. Uh, they're stealing enough to pa- ent- uh, power an entire fleet. Stormtroopers start attacking. Han saves Chewie, which I think is where the life debt comes from. Wasn't it freeing him from the, like... This is one of those things where, like... Because he saves... You explained <laughs> where he got his blaster from. <laughs> but you didn't show and explicitly have a moment where Han and Chewie bond over him saving his life and having a fucking life debt. You understand that Chewie has to stay with Han forever now because by Wookiee law, if you save someone's life, you get to sleep on their lap whenever the fuck you want. Yeah. Amy, if I saved your life, yeah. I'd call you at 3 o'clock in the morning and say, I'm coming over and there's nothing you can do. Get in here, Jesus Christ. Christ. I'm on your fucking lap. Pull you better shave and get it ready for me. Manscaped. No. Manscaped.com. No, 
Anyway, I guess that's where the life that comes yeah. from. We never know. Let but we do know. We see the dice four more times. Uh, they uncouple the compartment with the troopers uh, in it. But guess what? Reese, the guy from the lizard, the, the lizard from Star- Spider-Man comes. Reese Ives? No, anyway, it's Emphas Nest. That's her name. Uh, comes and her you game. You the fuck out of yeah. me. Yeah. Sorry. What are you saying? I was trying to make a funny joke, but you got it. I'll just keep moving forward. Uh, but Emphas Nest. And her game come uh, to harsh on everyone's mellow. And then John Favreau gets shot and crashes his ship. And Han goes up, leaving Chewie to uncouple the compartment on his own. Uh, they trip a sensor, w- and, and uh, which releases a bunch of Viper droids. Which, you know, in my day, they used to call them probe, probe droids. droids. I don't know why they got to call them pri- Viper Sounds droids. Sounds cooler. It's way cooler, but they're just probe droids. It's, some it's, difference it's, to it's them. a PC culture, and we got to be sensitive. Uh, Han oh, takes control it. of the ship. <laughs> and despite not really doing anything in particular, John Favreau tells him he's one hell of a pilot. And then dies. So that's how she, Han becomes a pilot. Uh, Val, thank, I, you, thank you, Rio. Thanks. Uh, I, I do want to say that Emphis Nest. I wish we saw that this technology more, where they have little speeder bikes that can fly wherever. Like Harley's. I love like that. a biker game. Like, I awesome. love how that. It's just so aesthetically cool looking. I, I also, also like their, I like her helmet. I also wish this crew had died in the explosion, and then we see Emphis Nest later, and it's like, whoa, what's going on here? And it's because like there is a throwaway line later that she says where it's like. And my mom was this, and now I wear the helmet. Yeah. Mm. Where it's like, it would have been cooler. It would have been cooler if we had seen that crew die. And then it's like, wait, how are they still around? And it's like, oh. Good call. She picked up a mantle, and she's also kind of a child, you know? Yeah. Anyway, Val ices a couple of Viper droids as Beckett fights Enfys. Uh, Val gets pinned down. She's going to have to finish the job from there. It's been, a, it's been a ride, and I wouldn't change any of it for anything. Well, I might change this last part so I could live for the rest of the movie. But oh well. Good kaboo. She blows the, the, uh, herself up and takes the bridge out with her. Chewie manages to uncouple the car just in time, and they take off with the cargo container. Only Enfys' gang is tethered to it as well. Uh, at the last second, Han makes a call and tells Chewie to uncouple it. Uh, Enfys' gang can't handle the load, and they crash leaving the car to fall to the mountain range below the impact ignites the coaxium and a real big explosion follows uh and beckett is pissed we were hired he's like he what but he's not pissed that val died he's pissed because he forgot to tell everyone that they were hired by crimson dawn which is generic as fuck but i gotta hand it's it to cool. you it's dope name. very it's destiny dope sounding name. yeah uh, can you just imagine can you hear the 80s sync like synth sounds yeah <laughs> <laughs> The uh, the explosion inspired by the explosion from the Slow Mo Guys video, Gavin oh, Free. There you go. So they did a video where they showed an explosion underwater mm. and how it looks, mm. and they you know of course at like a million frames per second, and then at fucking a cool big technology explosion. conference where the the S, the special effects guys for Solo are you know in front of a crowd and showing how they did the you know the visuals and what they were inspired by. They were like, yeah, and we saw this video from Slow Mo Guys, and they showed how the explosion just like and it like sucked everything in. And they're like, yeah, that's where we got the inspiration from. That's and so it looks cool. so badass. Yeah. And the yeah, sound design is awesome. Cool, yeah. That's really cool. Uh, he says, we're, we're fucked, man. We owe Crimson Dawn 100 keys of refined coaxium. And when they find out we, didn't, we don't got it, they're going to kill us. And Han's like, that sounds like a you problem. Because they don't know I'm here. And I'll just say I wasn't here. Uh, anyway, Han wants to run. But Beckett tells him that they'll come to hunt us down. Dryden Voss is going to be pissed. You have any idea what it's like to live with a bounty on your head? Remember that? Dryden Voss is such a villain name. That is a great It's such name. a Titan AE villain, villain name. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Damn, Andy. <laughs> I also, uh, I really like the design like choice they made with his like scars on his face. They like, every time he gets mad, they get like red. He looks like Colonel Volgan yeah. from Metal Gear Solid. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Big scars. Mm-hmm. Not as muscular, though. No. Uh, the only thing to do is go and see him and see if they can reach a compromise. Beckett warns him if he comes with, though. Dryden Voss knows he's part of this. Han is in this life for good. This is a make or break moment. And Han's like, fuck it, I'll go sure. in. I got nothing cool. else. Yeah. I got I don't have shit till Sunday, so let's just go. Let's just go. Chewie, you want to come? Yeah. Chewie's mm. like, fuck no. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> they, they head over to Dryden Voss's <laughs> pimp yacht. They take they, <laughs> oh, Kermit. Uh, they head over to Dryden, Dryden Voss's pimp yacht. Take that Java, you bitch. Which conveniently is on the planet where they pulled the heist. Which seems kind of obvious, but I guess Dryden's not really scared of the Empire. Uh, maybe he's never met my good old friend Darth Vader yet. Because if he had, I'd be like, get this ship as far fucking away from this heist as possible. Because I don't want Vader tying me to this shit. That dude is scary, and he can force choke motherfucker from like four light years away. Yeah. They, uh, let's see. Uh, the end of the yacht. 
Which, which, and we see the usual rogues gallery of party going space people, including two singers who are so fucking tone deaf, it's painful. Uh, I think, again, this seems really, really dark. So, for all I know, uh, maybe none of this could have happened. Maybe they're in key. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's so dark. Maybe I, just, maybe I misheard it. <laughs> uh, Dryden is just finishing killing the, the regional uh, governor, and then he's all like, I get so worked up. It's a party. And then he's all like, I shouldn't lose my head like that. Because he cut the guy's head off. It doesn't matter. Uh, oh, sorry. He stabbed the dude in the heart. I can't remember. Okay. Oh, no, he actually did say I shouldn't lose my head like that. Sorry, that, that's an actual line I put in quotes. You can uh, see it. Anyway, someone taps on Han's shoulder, and guess what? It's Kira, and he's super happy. He's here for her, but she tells him, it's in the past. And he's like, I'm really confused, because last time I saw you was three years ago. She's like, it was three years ago. Yeah. You didn't think shit would change? I've done some You've been holding shit. on to this it, for three? Like, I moved on. It's like, hey, I moved on, uh, but also I didn't, and uh, I'm going to join you for this entire trip. And uh, it's like, I know that he's telling me to join you, which is also a weird, bizarre yeah. move, because, you know, when I have a super hot girlfriend, that's the one thing I want to do is, like, give her to this attractive guy yeah. you gotta yeah, might as well i mean listen no my, people my, can make their own decisions my whole problem with it is that i i'm surprised that he's not more like hey what the f-? like they weren't just hey, catch me up they weren't just a fling we you have know what yeah. I mean? yeah we have and one dice involved and suddenly she's on the other side it's like hey but like wait whoa 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 what let's talk about this really quick because i like this guy's trying to kill us and you know me really well we've we were together for a while we weren't yeah. just like this fucking not one night stand you know what i mean like, like I, I'm so confused by this whole. B- I actually like relationship this because I feel like her character has grown and matured. And they have one line here that I wrote down where he goes, "How did you get out?" And she says, "I didn't." Mm. And I think that's so fucking deep and cool of a thing to say, which is like, "I left the planet, but I didn't leave the life, and I'm still very much involved in this." And I think that's the core of this movie that I actually do like is is that theme of like, once you're in, you're in. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, when you're, once you're into that gangster life, like you can never get out of it. And I actually like her character turn at the end of this. It's just like, like your life, too. It's exactly like once my life, man. In, once I became in an internet personality and said all the crazy shit that I say on camera, I can never run for Senate. I can never get a job. I can't even work at 7-Eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Nick wanted hire. to run for Senate. That's that true. was his other option. I don't know how that works, but I'm pretty sure I can get it. <laughs> if, we can, if we can almost win a streamy, we, I can, we can get me into the Senate. <laughs> Did we almost win a streamy? Yeah, no. we, we were close. No. Yeah, revisionist Didn't history. Didn't get nominated. Sh- I work for Dryden Voss. Well, uh, what should we drink to? Let's drink two. Uh, the Death of C- Our Enemies. <laughs> no, I like this. Nailed it. This... <laughs> This is one of those scenes where I'm like, oh, my God, how did you shoot this and then not immediately recast the movie? She goes, what should we drink to? And he goes, let's drink two and see where it goes. I fucking love it. But Hell they have yeah. zero chemistry. You're right. Zero chemistry. It's so bad. If I heard good. one of you guys say that, I'd be like this. Hey, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> we're done. We're done. Never say that again in public if I'm here because you're going to take my already low cool factor and drag it, it down. Seems like some, that. It That's seems cool like something you would say, Nick. I'll be honest with you. If Harrison Ford said that. I'd be like, all right, dude, let's fucking drink too. Nick, Nick, Nick wouldn't say it though. Nick would fuck it up the first time and like miss the punchline yeah. of it and then have to say it again. <laughs> I would say, let's drink two, the death of our enemies. <laughs> and yeah. see where it goes. <laughs> anyway, Dryden comes over and seems real cool, but you kind of get the fucking feeling that he's not cool. You feel like he's not Is cool. Is it the with scars this. on the face? <laughs> well, no, he's like, hey, buddy, what's going on? You're like, oh, this guy's going to fucking like stab you in the bag. Uh, which I think, again, is plays the Paul, Bet- Paul Bettany being a great actor here. Yeah. He comes over and it's like, Polly B. What's. What's more ominous than someone who's posing as your best friend, but you know, like, not too far down underneath yeah, the surface is a stone-cold fucking killer. I love that. I, he, he decided not to play it uh, intense. He decided to play it, like, cool. And you're like, all right, this guy's I'm going to have two with and see where it goes. If he just had didn't have the scars, or if he had the scars and was just, like, his name was, like, Michael... Richards, Dude, or something. <laughs> like Michael, Michael Richards, like, like yeah, it'd be a different okay. you know I mean? Kramer. But for him, like you know, we gotta give him the sinister name. <laughs> we gotta give him the scars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Scars are cool, man. Yeah. Uh, they go anyway. They go into Dryden's office, and he goes, "There's no making this right. There has to be consequences. I need you to give me a reason not to kill you." And then he goes, "I will make it up to you by delivering what you hired me for: a hundred keys." You'll, and he goes, "You'll be I'll be hard pressed to come up with refined source that big." And he goes, "Maybe on Seraph, Scarif." Oh, like remember, remember that? Remember Scarif? That? But they also name like two other planets for Scarif I'm fine being with the, that. Like, Scarif, but Scarif being example. the planet, I'm like, no, that was the planet that the Imperials kept their fucking archives on. They and the need, refined a vault. <laughs> sure. They're like, a, like they, we need an empirical vault. That, that would be a an vault. Empirical vault, huh? An yeah. empirical <laughs> vault. Uh, Han, is, right? But then Han gets the bright idea: if we can't get refined coaxium, what about unrefined coaxium? That rock There's shit. a mine on Kessel. We could just run over to it. 
And it'll only take us a parsec or 12. Round See what up. he did there? Lots of word plays. Uh, it's risky. Unrefined quack seems unstable. We need a fast ship and a brilliant pilot and maybe, just maybe, a giant fucking cooler to keep this stuff at temperature. Right. No, 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 no. We don't need that. We don't need that. But why not? Just get the ship and the thing. But like, if we didn't, we don't need a fast ship if we have a, just like a, an ice whatever bucket or something to put these fucking whatever things in. Whatever storage it was in, which didn't look like it was cool. No, not at all. It, it Like, they didn't go in there and were like... Wow, it's really well, the cool line wasn't that he did the castle run in a really cold temperature. It's that he did it fast. Yeah. No, no it's that he did it in 12 parsecs. I mean, he did it short, not fast. Yeah. A parsec is a measure of distance, not time. Not he did do it short, though. He did. Yeah. And fast. Later we see it because the it's it's a path, and he just went, skipped a little bit. It's true. He skipped eight parsecs. The coolest part of the movie. Fuck yeah. Let's just yeah. talk about that. Uh, Let's talk about how cool the, the end. How the cool whole castle run. Like, the cloud, awesome. like clouds around a giant fucking uh, uh, imperial... Uh, Dude, Star Destroyer, Star Destroyer Star, like Star Destroyer. it's just all the visuals were Looked fucking astounding. Great, yeah. I love all of them. I also really like this giant like Elridge monster thing with yeah, like, me too. Uh, the hella eyes and it's me like, too. oh shit. The idea of a big squid in space just yeah. gets me going. It's always a bigger squid. It's so cool. Anyway. It's it's an exact type of sci-fi I'm super into. Chewie suggests they take it over to uh, Severine where they can get it refined uh, and we'll find a ship uh, and, and the Han goes, we already have a pilot and he points to himself and everyone laughs. But it's not the kind of laugh where they're laughing with you. It's the kind of laugh where they're laughing at this casting choice. Uh, Donald, of course, then uh, enter oh, Donald Glover Jesus. Who, who won his <laughs> ship in a game of Savak. Uh, Donald Glover mispronounced his hand, hand's name, so you know that's why that happened later in Empire. Uh, check that one off the list. What other things? No, but they also explaining? had the joke of, I mean, like the kind of meta joke of him going, oh, Sabak, and then Lana going, no, it's Sabak, and correcting him. And then, my name is Han. Oh, Han. It's like, no, it's Han. You know, the, yeah, Sabak, yeah, yeah. the ah, the ah, you so know much, what I mean? So much wit. It's cool. I, but I, I like this so scene. So much witty I get, back and I forth. I feel like this gave it a little flavor that connects to so, the... the future. Sure. Uh, to me, it fell super flat. Anyway, they play poker, and it's boring. Ha- Han just is really good, and Lando cheats. And that's it. That's I thought pretty it was much fun. how it happens. I uh, Lando is, re- I mean, Han is really good. Like, yeah. he actually won a bunch of games, right? Yeah. That's he won a lot works. of money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kira Smooth sings over with Lando and negotiates 25% of the take to help. Then we meet L3 and Ron Howard's brother. Uh, she's super into droid rights. Uh, but all the uh, all that doesn't matter because they're making the Kessel run, everyone. Before, before we move on, though, like the scene of Lando and Kira talking, I fucking loved. Because it's just like Donald Glover as Lando is... I, I just fucking love him. I love Donald Glover. I love Lando. You put them together. I'm going to have a good time. But all that I want to see... Somehow, when Star Wars introduces time travel, is I want to see young Donald Glover, Lando Calrissian, just meet Poe Dameron, and I just want to put him in a room. Oh, they're gonna make out, and so I just want to see what happens. They're gonna you know? tongue each other. They're gonna other's tongue each other. God. Yeah, uh, and I'll watch it. Yeah, me too. I'll watch it. <laughs> I'll watch it proudly. I don't care. Turn the lights on in the theater. See what I'm doing. Because this movie's too dark. <laughs> dark. <I> see. <laughs> uh, Lando takes them to his ship, which is locked, so they break in, and we see the Millennium Falcon. Sadly, Lando's ship is impounded. Uh, luckily, Beckett has the experience with boots. Uh, he can take it off, but for 5%, Lando's cut is down to 20%. He doesn't like it. He doesn't agree mm. with it, but he accepts it, which is I a like line that. that I really I love like. this. I like yeah, that. Very cool. I, again, <sighs> Good scenes with good actors. Anyway, uh, meanwhile, one of the F- uh, Enfys' goons was spying on them the whole time. He attached a homing beacon to the Falcon. Uh, if they survive, they'll bring us the prize. Ha, <laughs> ha, uh, Han takes in, uh, <laughs> takes in the bridge of the Falcon and tells Lando about his dad. And Lando's like, oh, you mean Mr. Solo? And Han's like, nah, we, we just didn't have a last name. <laughs> it's actually a hilarious story. You see, I was being chased by Imperial stormtroopers. <laughs> <gasps> oh, God oh, damn man. this movie! I love how white the Millennium Falcon is. Yeah, like, how, how clean yeah, it is. But, but what's is up so with the, fucking... the? Why is it all solid in the center? Because oh, they they have that yeah. throwaway line. Yeah, where he goes. I installed a, a, a what is it? An escape pod uh, escape, in the yeah. in the. And then remember they shoot it out. And they shoot it out. Toward and it's the, like, oh, now it's the Millennium Falcon. You remember? Yeah, he said I upgraded the ship. They have this whole thing that about how it's a dope Carillion, Carillion ship or whatever. And he's like, I installed this, and the and the dish was different because it gets knocked off. Yeah. Remember that. Well, one thing that kind of disappointed me is when they walked through it the first time, and it's like, wow. Super clean. It's so clean. And 
Han is just a terrible owner who just doesn't fucking clean his shit. Yeah, yeah Han's Because look how fucking beautiful it looks. I but also, true, man. I do love that. It's Pressure probably, watch probably that shit. It's yeah. like, because Han, you have to figure that Han for the first couple years tried to keep it clean, but he was like, this fucking Wookiee just keeps <laughs> shedding everywhere. And he wipes his ass on the walls. Yeah. It's part of their culture. I don't know why. Big they ass. used to wipe their ass on trees. Now they do the walls. Um, I, I love the little touch in this, by the way, that Lando's ship was impounded. Because he's always posturing that he is yeah, bigger than he yeah, is. Yeah, and you're like, tight. is that your ship? Isn't yeah, we ship? keep it locked we up. Really know. Like he owed money to the police. That was a weird moment too. Like we keep it locked up. All right, L three. Oh, like let let's get in. No, L3 he it like, was impounded. I can't like I can't perform while you guys are looking. It's like you, no, that was weird, right? Why? I don't know. That I can't perform, and then she cuts the thing, and she's like, "Oh, I know you guys are looking." A lot of I sex just, jokes. I felt like that was just added as comedic beats that like didn't need to be there. Anyway, as they head toward the plan, they say a lot of words about how hard the Kessel Run is, so we know it's important, and L3 accuses Lando of flirting, and it all feels a little inappropriate, uh, so you I know I liked it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Beckett plays chess. <laughs> L3 Lando shit, I'm fucking It's so it. weird and funny. It works. It's great. <laughs> it works. Uh, Beckett plays chess with Chewie, and it's great, and he tells Chewie people are predictable. And you're like, oh, that's foreshadowing. Interesting. I think he also at some point told Han not to trust anyone. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, you're clearly going to be a bad guy toward the end of this. Uh, then Han makes out with Kira in the cape room, and they have in the as- cape. Motherfuckers, he has a cape room. I love it so much. It's a great touch. I just wish. I that's one of those touches where I'm like, if I put that in, don't call attention to it. Just make it the cape room. That's his room. And you're like, I just, like I would have loved it as an audience member to just have seen that and be like, wait. Does he just have a room full of capes no, and then I, move on? No, I love it because I, they didn't, they didn't say Lando. They didn't whatever. It's like it's Sorry. it wasn't as on the nose as it could have been to make it bad. And I love she's just like, oh, I got a shot in a cape. It's yeah. like, yeah, you do. That's fucking yeah. awesome. Anyway, they I make out. Great. And man, they got about as much chemistry as Daenerys and Jon Snow. And look how that ended. Beckett interrupts and tells Han he's fucking up his life. He doesn't know Kira enough. And, and, and he goes, uh, it worked for Val. You trusted her. And he goes, I trust no one. Assume everyone will betray you and you won't be disappointed. Foreshadowing. I'm going to fuck you up in the third act. You ain't going to see it coming. But you know it's going to feel good when it happens. Uh, they go What's through the, the maelstrom and it's scary. Also, he does see it coming. Yeah, he does see it coming. Yeah. Uh, L3 <laughs> asks Kira what she's going to do about her little problem, which I assume she means her piece. Uh, nope, she's referring to that mark on Kira's arm. That means she's committed to Han, and, and who is cl- or, excuse me, she's committed to uh, Dryden Voss. But Han is clearly herpes in- that way. Herpes. <laughs> 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 but Han is clearly in love with her and she's like no he's not and we're all like yes he is like why would you even bother well, denying that yeah, it's no really he's weird. not everyone's like yeah he said so much he told us all he's in love with you well, it's weird why, why are you he fucking, literally said he's he here kissed you. for you anyway they get to the mining colony and Beckett dresses like Lando did in Jedi remember that and then they put on a delicate charade with Han and Chewie as fake slaves and sneak into the mining facility and Akira punches Han in the stomach for good measure uh, but what uh, what she was really doing is sneaking him those goddamn dice. And you're like, oh, maybe she's giving him the dice so he can pick the locks on his thing with the dice? No. 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 Just giving them to him. I did really like the alien design that like, kept dripping random fluid. I thought it was cool looking. Why? The, what was the point of the dice being given back? Was that her kind of like I'm moving on for you? From no, you? it was. Luck. That feels yeah, like yeah, because he fucking... gave it to her at the beginning for good luck, and no. then she gave it back to him for. But good then luck. she got like taken away for three years and sold into slavery. But she wasn't dead. I, I <laughs> caught this. Uh, yeah, okay, you're I, just, right. I caught it get... as a I'm punching you, but like we're, cool. we're like yeah. that was just a, that was just an act here. I'm to prove that it's an act. It's like if I go like this, Kevin. I don't like you. I know he's joking because he gave exactly. me my dice. <laughs> exactly. Got Which would have been really powerful if we thought like later in the movie, like if this had happened later in the movie where she thought we, we thought she was really going to portray him in mm-hmm. Dryden Voss's mm-hmm. office, but she slid him the dice and he's like, oh shit, she ain't going to betray me. But in this scene, it's just unnecessary. Yeah. It was just an unnecessary also, waste of digital Also, it didn't film. help with the situation. Not at all. Uh, Han breaks free and Chewie rips like, some guard's fucking arms off, which is a reference that I didn't need, but... Is kind of awesome because they say, they cut over to him. He's like oh, with two yeah, arms. Well, I love this line. I, Remember I, the line in the original movie? He's like, "Be careful! He's if you beat him in chess, he'll rip your arm off." And C three P is like, "Oh goodness gracious me!" Well, we get a, we get a reference to that here. Yeah, but I, I do really enjoy the line of like, yeah, "That was a, a perfectly good uh, <laughs> you know security oh, so officer suit that would have worked on." Yeah, yeah, but That's now fair. he's just sleeveless. That would have been fine. Uh, everyone sure. breaks free with relative <laughs> blood <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, how many sleeves is hot in here? Yeah, <laughs> Daenerys, but again, the movie's so dark. How, how do you tell if he's wearing yeah, sleeves or not? Daenerys fights. Right? Uh, everyone breaks free with relative ease uh, and heads though? down to the mining colony. Daenerys, Daenerys fights with Terrace Kasi. 
What's Terrace Kasi? You oh, might ask. Who the Nick. fuck knows? Terrace Kasi uh, is a fighting style uh, made famous from the PlayStation One game Masters of Terrace Kasi, the Star Wars fighting game that was fucking atrociously horrible. It is critically known as like one of the worst video games ever. This is a great place and for it to come back. Yeah, so yeah. she had to mention. Yeah. You know, it's Terrace Kasi, Dryden yeah. Boss. Talk it's also me. in lore the, the sure. fighting style Dragon Maul, not Dragon Maul, <laughs> pretty dope though. Darth Maul uses. Oh, oh do they teach it on Dothamir? Yeah. Well, maybe when we'll, he mentioned maybe we'll the, see that in the when he mentioned the planet, I was like, oh, cool. That's really I, cool. I, I was like, oh, I played the game. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Anyway, uh, L3 so takes the restraining bolt off a droid and starts a revolution. They free all the slaves and shit goes fucking bonkers. Chewie gets it on, uh, and then he frees some of his fellow Wookiees and one uh, and I guess one Crow Magnon man. I don't know. This is the ugliest yeah. Wookiee I've ever why seen in my life. Ugly, that's a Wookiee uglier yeah. than Fallen Order. Holy shit, man. I don't like this. Whoa, no, not you. Get back <laughs> in the <laughs> Hey, get back in the <laughs> I'm sorry, there's nothing for no. you out there. We're not the same. <laughs> Do you know who that Wookiee was? No. Anthony Daniels. Was it? Oh. C-3PO. C-3PO himself? This is the only movie C-3PO is not in, but Anthony Daniels is in uh. every Star Wars movie. Han breaks free in the vault uh, by kicking a guard in the nutsack. Uh, once inside, we get more talk about the Quaxium's internal temperature. If it reaches 35 degrees, it'll blow up. And then someone's like, thank God fridge. we called my Uncle Danny. He used to have one of those big fridges that you put meat in. Chef I always had the fridges. ice on the side that yeah. as a kid I would I would try to ship off. It was really yeah. hard. Did you ever eat it? Uh, no, because there was like uh, meat in there that it was exposed. Like, it tastes and I was like, like meat. Like, That's it? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Anyway, it tastes like you or meat? Meat. I thought you said it tastes like me. I was like, no. what does that no. taste like? Oh, Jesus. Lomo Sartara? No. Uh, back... <laughs> Back on the Falcon, Lando smell. logs a chapter of the Calrissian Chronicles, Why which I fucking <laughs> love. I, I thought that was it's funny. funny. I thought that was really funny. Those are uh, like pulpy books, right? That actually exist. Sure, I but it's the so. first time we've seen this. I think tech being used in that way, the hologram tech, right? Like the a, recording himself. Yeah, like a selfie version. I think it's so cool looking. Yeah, it's I, I it's it the first rad. time we've seen like implemented. You know, he's, and he's, also I thought it fit the character really totally. well. Yeah, yeah. Again, watching like, him do anything is fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, before we move on, though. Let me tell you about our sponsor, HoneyBook. It's what you've always dreamed of, Nick. You started your own business. I did. You have no boss. I don't. You are Except the boss. Except for you and Greg. You are the CEO. My God. No one told you there would be so much admin work. Reality check. Running your own business is hard, but HoneyBook makes it easy easy. HoneyBook is an online business management tool that organizes your client communications, bookings, contracts, and invoices all in one place. They make it super simple. There's a lot of annoying things you got to do in life, and they make it less annoying, which is always nice. It's always the little things that add up to you having a bad day. HoneyBook can help you have a very good day. With HoneyBook, you can automate your busy work. They have easy-to-use templates for emails, proposals, brochures, and invoices. They also have e-signatures and a built-in automation to save you time and get you paid. E-signatures? Quite possibly the greatest invention of the 21st century. Do you remember when you had to print stuff out, scan it, and then send it? Like, sign it, scan it, so send much easier. It, They're touch even cooler it, when you it, use format it when you use a tablet. Yeah. Like a drawing tablet? Uh, yeah. I just uh, pop it in. Boop, 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 boop. You can boop, just boop, type boop, anyone's boop, name boop. there. Simplify yeah. your to do list. He doesn't know about <laughs> And stay in contact with HoneyBook. Uh, and right now, HoneyBook is offering you guys 50% off when you visit HoneyBook.com slash morning. Payment is flexible, and this promotion applies whether you pay monthly or annually. Go to HoneyBook.com slash morning for 50% off your first year. That's HoneyBook.com slash morning. HoneyBook.com slash morning. And that's it. Thank you, HoneyBook, for sponsoring the show. Mm-hmm. We appreciate and you, And if you can't Honey support Book. us directly, please... Uh, support our sponsors to show them that we are worth it. We are worth it. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Andy. Mm-hmm. So coming up next, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for. We it. got the Game Awards reactions. That's good. Yeah. I'm so. How, what's your hype level for that? Very high. Me too. Very high. Me too, man. I'm feeling good. Oh, Welcome it's... back, Nick. It's all hey, good. Sorry. Let's get back to the plot. Let's get back to the plot, ladies and gentlemen. Back on the Falcon Lando logs a chapter of the Calrissian Chronicles outside. He sees slaves pouring out of the mines. L3 calls it a mass breakout. She's found her real purpose. Liberation. Han almost gets. Which said that was fucking hilarious. Yeah, uh, Han almost gets got, but Chewie uh, and the Wookiees, dope name for a space alt rock band. I just want to throw that out there. Uh, come in and wreck shop. Uh, they all help push the Coaxium out together. Maybe Coaxium. next time again, steal dangerous canister. Uh, next time you steal dangerous canisters of fuel, you could load it onto a cooler onto the Falcon. We've already talked about that. Really Lando simple. blasts people. Uh, Han blasts people, and at no point do we feel like these characters are in danger, which feels kind of nice. It's nice. This whole oh my gosh, this scene lasts. So long. 
This shootout goes on way too long, dude. There's so there. You think it's over, and then Amelia Clark is suddenly doing stuff. And it's like they're still <laughs> out here, and like they're still shooting, man. The thing is, I've often said how tired, like how how tired I am of feeling tension during these big action pieces. So finally, it's nice to have just like a second act midpoint that I can take a bathroom break during. You know, it's nice. They just everyone's throwing stuff. Like, I don't really need to know what happens here because it doesn't matter. When she pops out and like throws a grenade, it's like fuck. This, they're still fighting <laughs> out here, man. It's just ridiculous how there are a bunch of people running away. And there's a bunch of people shooting at them, but only th- four people with guns shooting back, and somehow they're not being prioritized to get shot at, and they're taking out all these people, and it's just like, this is one of those scenes. Maybe give guns to the the people that are running away, so they could also help and like you know, I don't know. This is just one of those scenes that's lazy. It just feels lazy. The action here is like, how do we, we get out action. of the mine? And they're like, just ha- let them shoot at some stuff and let them get back on the thing because we have to get to the castle run. That's really what this is all about. So then L three uh, gets and then oh no, L three gets got. And then Lander runs to save her. Uh, the Wookiees want Chewie to come with him, but he owes Han what they call a life debt. We think, again, he hasn't really specified. I think he just likes Han. But I guess he just, just likes like, Han. Well, this guy's cool. I mean, they have showered together. So once mm-hmm. I showered with Tim, I was like, we should start a company together. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, showered with Andy. Here we are. Just oh, I did shower up. with yeah. Andy. <laughs> that was fun, too. Anyway, uh, they get away. <laughs> when Kira throws some grenades, but L3 is One dead, day. which is, uh, I guess, or not. Maybe she's dying. Uh, thankfully, her death is uh, just what the doctor ordered uh, to get Han to the pilot seat. So important important note there, she used to be the pilot, and now pi- Han's like, I'm the pilot. I am the, I am the pilot now. I am the pilot now. Finally, he is after all, all the... He is the best pilot in the galaxy now. He's, he's is. ascended to that rank. L3 dies in Lando's arms, and it's sad until you realize she's a robot and can pretty much just be repaired with spare parts from the fucking vending machine in the back of the ship. Then uh, they run into the Imperial blockade. They probably heard about your little rebellion. Remember that? God, this shit looks so... The blockade was awesome. dope. It well, looked really cool, like, God. but I feel like the whole... What, so that was an Imperial governed planet <clears throat> where they stole the, the... I guess so, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, they were going to go to a non-Imperial run thing to refine it. Yeah. Okay, all right, cool. The Empire uh, uh, launches TIE fighters, and now the clock is ticking. they got to make up for lost time if the canister or the canisters would explode. How? Well, there's no way we can make the Kessel run in less than 20 parsecs. Oh, yeah? I bet I can do it in less than 12. Less than 12. Han cuts through the mouse worm, but not before they take out L3's neural core to help out. So I, I guess you didn't uh, you didn't do it all by yourself there, did you, Han? Because L3 did all the calculating. You just fucking pirated, piloted the ship a little bit. Just saying, revisionist. No, but the also, re- just the- randomly into the, like, the left. He was just like, I'm going to bank yeah. left I'll here. Just go this way, I guess. I'm sure the it'll be cool, fine. I, I think a moment that really kind of hit me and got me stoked was when... Uh, Chewie get, gets on the boards and he finally sits down. They look at each other. I was like, dude, this is that, cool. Yeah, the last fucking go no. moment yeah. of the whole thing. Yeah. You know, the L3 why? stuff is really stupid, but man, the score here, all of this, they the do score. the song. They do Give the me song. a nick. Give me a nick. So fucking I'm like, cool. Use that all the time. Yeah. Use it all the time. I really, really like that scene where Kira's trying to do stuff and it's just like, I don't know, I don't know what the yeah, fuck that's I'm, what I'm doing. talking about. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. And that was a cool thing, but then I feel like they added a joke in there that didn't need to happen of like, Wait, I didn't know you could be a pilot. Like you, you know, you were a pilot. How old, old are you? Yeah. Well, and not, it's just like, all right, cool. not only that, it's a it's a big moment, but I just feel like the moment itself didn't play well because they play the Star Wars theme for a second, and you're like, oh, you want us to feel this? I get it. Yeah, I and, felt it. Yeah, you, know, you look great. But I felt it. I, I felt it until that moment because then it's like, then it's just them being like, oh, that's why Chewie was in what Return uh, Revenge of the Sith and then still in here, and I guess is young. Or whatever. He was you think we're, again, you think we're gonna get Baby Chewie one of these days? Baby Chewie in, in an off, off, off Star Wars show on Disney Plus that people love at the beginning and then three episodes in go, this is a horrible mistake, I mean, Kathleen Kennedy. We, Hand slides the ship with landing gear uh, down and kills some TIE fighters with rocks. Then they flood something and get away. Sorry, Barrett, what were you gonna say? Uh, we, we've gotten Baby Chewie before. In the Christmas special, right? The Clone Wars. Oh, Clone Wars. That was, that was, uh, that doesn't make any sense. He well, wouldn't have been a baby. He well, was one hundred and like seventy. I'm not saying it was Chewbacca. I was. I think that was. Well, I, I think that was Ewok, either. and you're being racist. <laughs> no, it was, oh, it was, fuck. It was, got, I've been meaning to talk to you about this, Barrett. You're uh, racist. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, if you can't tell it was uh, a Wookiee at an Ewok, I mean, I feel, come on, bro. Guys, we cannot perpetuate this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we not? <laughs> All right, let's move on. Down in the cargo hold, the canisters are heating up. Uh, uh, let's see. Eventually, in the Star Wars universe, they they don't believe in ice. I guess. Uh, let's see. I love that. Hold on, hold on, real quick. I love that the two founders and owners of the company are the ones doing the joke. 
<laughs> That's how people get sued, guys. <laughs> it's a dumb, obvious joke. Uh, let's see. The shit's heating up evidently in the Star Wars universe. They don't believe in eyes. What is this? You're up in the 80s. Uh, they get attacked by a big squid to get away. They head down. No, Nick. I'm calling you out. <laughs> You're, they're not big on ice. That's, that's a pretty well-known fact. And in the 80s, they didn't even have it. They had the technology. They just never 100% used right. it. You would get Cokes and you'd be like, can I get a Coke? And they'd bring it out. It was like lukewarm. And it's they just also like, believe why don't that it? even now? Like, why the 80s? Well, well in the 80s, more. they didn't have the technology. I'm with Nick on this one. Oh, it was especially egregious in the 80s. Egregious in the 80s. When they were yeah. Now you can get ice, but when before they'd be like, we don't have When these two motherfuckers ice. are agreeing with each other, <laughs> it is a force <laughs> unknown to the world that I don't want to ever uh, Also, fight. um Also, uh, they, uh, fun fact, when I went to Italy the first time when I was a kid, I asked for breakfast cereal, and they gave me warm milk. With Fucking cereal. assholes, dude. And I was like, dude. this is archaic. Isn't it yeah. crazy? How, when, when did you go? Oh, God, my 1986. I still think, like, how crazy it is flying across the world, like, before 2005. Yeah. It's so scary. Well, they used to do it, like, in the 40s also. That's crazy. It's wild. You know what else is wild? What's up? The plot of this movie. They get attacked by a giant squid, and to get away, they head toward the Maw. Han jettisons the escape pods. The squid will stop, uh, and then it gets sucked in by the Maw. L3's brain finds them a way out, but they're being sucked into the Maw also. Thankfully, they got all the powerful fuel down there. One drop uh, into the fusion line should get th- give them the kick they need. And the squid's fucking skin is being sucked off its yeah, skeleton. That's cool. So awesome. So looking. bad for that. I love Squish all play. it. That sucks. Yeah. Beckett opens a canister, which again really should have been in its own cooling system, and takes out a, uh, a space syringe full and fills the stuff with it. Uh, the direct TV dish on top of the Falcon gets pulled off, which I assume is yet another pointless reference. Uh, then so they it's had three dishes in put, the last. Yeah, then they put the fuel in the thing, and at first it doesn't work, uh, but then it does. Uh, and then Han does the thing where he turns the ship sideways, and it, th- it didn't work last time, but guess what? It works this time, because all of the growth the character and character development that Han's gone through, and we've seen him go through in the last hour, gives him the ability to actually pilot the ship correctly. See, and that's my problem. That's how like, you write this whole scene was very fucking cool, and I loved that it didn't work, and I loved how it looked, and I loved what he did to get through. Yeah. But you're right, Nick. It just It's like, no... This is just, uh, well, it happened then. We're doing it again the other way because he grew. You're telling us he grew. Yeah. Instead of, like, giving us any actual evidence of him growing. Yep. The, 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 again, just to sort of mirror what you just said, the moment of it not working I think is so cool where, all right, punch it. <laughs> and it I shuts that down like, and it just starts getting sucked in. That, that moment of hopelessness I think is the, uh, one of the few moments that I actually felt tension in the movie and then – the the effect of it finally kickstarted. It's such a it's so well done. Uh, Kira tells him uh, they get away uh, anyway, and uh, Han wants Kira to run away with him, but she's like, she's I'm with Dryden now, and I can't leave. Everyone has a boss. I'm Dryden Voss. I'm Dryden, <laughs> I'm Dryden Voss is mine. Han isn't that kid you knew back on Corelli anymore. He, I'm an outlaw now, and the scene is fucking bad. And Kira tells him uh, she knows who he really is. He's the good guy. Uh, they walked uh, anyway. They walk the Quaxium. Uh, I guess they park. This is the weird thing. They land the ship. And it's like, get the shit off the ship. No, it's like, uh, we're here now. We got it. And there's yeah, no. They, they radio it beforehand. But they're there's like, like, we need to get this shit fucking off here. It's going to explode. But then it just, then they're like, cool, guys. We, they land and they go, let's go to the bar. And they just Literally. have a leisurely, let's like, jaunt up to the bar. bar. Didn't they, didn't they, we're show here the in Cabo scene now. Plugging into these cool, like, watered down tequila. Things Is that, that what it was? Out. I don't know. Maybe I missed that part. <laughs> they plug them in. It's like, it's like cool. Anyway, uh, they walk, to, they walk to the, to the coaxium refinement bar or something, and they're interrupted by it. Enfys, Ness, and her gang. And Han tries to play it off. Like, he's like, we got 30 hired guns on the Falcon. And then he looks over, and the Falcon takes off, which is actually a funny part. I, I like that. Also, the, the, another reference that I did enjoy a callback to was, uh, Lando being all mad at Han, just being like, "I hate you." Oh, and then like, being all I fucked know. up. Yeah, but I hate you. I know. Something yeah, I love you. I know. Right. I like that's fun. I like that. Um, but it's you cute. know what I don't like? The reveal of Empress Nest. Hey, it's a him the entire movie. Him, 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 him. She takes her helmet off. It's a her. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I'll never forget being in the theater watching this and being like, "Damn, I guess my nerd card needs to be revoked." I don't know who that is. Like, this is a reveal that I should no know fucking idea who, that who this is. character is. Oh. No? Nope. Just the reveal is that it's a woman? Because mm-hmm. that's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that it's, it's a wild. woman. Yeah. It was, what the, the, it fuck? was the Metroid. Well, it was also like, like, what? <laughs> like, it was like, such she was a, like a teenager, right? I think the fact that it was, was that she? she was so young is what it yeah. was. was it? I didn't get that. I mean, that. the fact that they oh. called it a him the entire movie and then yeah. let's put it this way. Woman. She doesn't look that much younger than Amelia Clark, who is we know is a capable, yeah, totally. uh, capable character in this movie. This reveal was totally useless, useless and, and fell flat. Distracting. And confusing. It was I was like, I like I had the same reaction. I was like, who the fuck is that? If it had been like a massive celebrity, 
I'd be like, oh, that was cool. Matt I didn't know this person. Yeah. It would have been Darth Maul. <laughs> yeah, or someone in the Star Wars universe that we had not previously known. She looks like a child. That's I think that's yeah. The, yeah. the shock that I gathered right. from it. Now, I will say that the whole time watching it, even on the second rewatch, I, I, I hadn't really thought about it a whole lot. And a shocker, I hadn't thought about this movie a whole lot. But <laughs> Enfys Nest, I thought was... A, 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 like the nest that belongs to Enfys, it's a nest of, of it's a gang. Like they, yeah, they're yeah, calling yeah. this like a a criminal network, a nest, you know, yeah, a physical thing. I thought it was what they were calling the group no, of people, but was, her full name. name was first name. Everything last name, about it's confusing, nest. and that's yeah. that's not good in a movie that already doesn't have much going on. Turns out, ladies and gentlemen, though, Beckett's like, man, we work for Crimson Dawn. They're going to be here before that Coaxium can be refined. They're going to kill everyone, so it's a stalemate. Turns out, Enfys, she's not, a, she's not a marauder at all. She's a freedom fighter, and she started this re rebellion against the likes of Crimson Dawn and all the criminal syndicates. Uh, we're not marauders. We're allies. Warwick Davis, baby! And the war has just begun. But... They're it's still so going to cool. kill us all. Uh, Han comes up with a plan to help the allies, but Beckett isn't down. He, he's like, I don't, I don't want any part of this. And he bounces. But before leaving, he tells everyone about one final job that involves a gangster on Tatooine. He's a big slug man. He's <laughs> you can't miss him. He speaks Hatesi. <laughs> Anyway, they head up to see Dryden, and Han uh, th uh, thinks he's like, we're going to win. And Kira's like, it ain't that kind of game, man. The objective isn't to win. It's just to stay in it as long as possible. And I'm like, again, what a cool, That's interesting why. thing that in I wish the game we could have Thrones, explored you more win or you, you die. die. Yeah. It's all about the game and hype. <laughs> That's the opposite of what you We are the here. Walking Dead. Uh, Kira tells him that it's not. Uh, anyway, uh, they tell Dryden Voss that Beckett died. And Dryden's like, oh, no, that's too bad. Then he wants to see the Coaxium. And when Han opens it up, we see a gun hidden inside the lid. Uh, and I was like, I don't know if this How do they going. make that lid? <laughs> so I don't know. They just carved it They just it cut out. the foam out. It's, it's great. Uh, Dryden wants Han to bring him. Put a in between it. It's <laughs> yeah. good. It's fine. Velcro. Dryden wants Han to bring him one of the, uh, the Coaxium tubes. Uh, but he ain't no fool. His associate already told him that their plan was to rob him by giving him fake Coaxium. And he looks at He's like, how did you do this? It looks identical. And I was like, how did they do that? That would that was interesting. Spoilers. Uh, I know. And then uh, Han, and then he's like, you've been betrayed. And Han's like, oh, what did Kira tell you? And Kira's like, hey, motherfucker, it wasn't me. And he goes, oh, no, it wasn't It wasn't Kira. It turns out your old, your old friend Beckett's warning about never trusting everyone wasn't just a cool cliche thing to say. It was foreshadowing. Nick was right, even though we'd seen this film I before. Hate, I hate the way this whole part is set up because they, the the way that they set up this reveal that it was uh, Beckett that it was old, Beckett the whole time yeah the the line as if delivery. it's gonna be some like completely different character walking through yeah. the door I, I thought it was gonna be some character from a past Star Wars movie but here here comes Beckett again it's like oh well what it's whiplash of twists I I wish like he would have just kind of like I don't know quickly been revealed and just walk into the room and be like. Sorry, Han, you know, but instead of, like, this long lead-up of walking down a hallway, it's so badly done. Dryden puts the ball in Kira's court. What would you do if you were me? I wonder if it's a moment of weakness or is, is, like, is it a moment of weakness? Or uh, how would you have them prove their loyalty to me? And then she goes, by sacrificing something I'd love. And she looks at Han, and you're like, okay, this is a little weird. Uh, but guess what? No need for that, because Beckett told Chewie that people are predictable, which means he predicted that Beckett was going to double-cross them. And when Dryden's men check Emphis Nest's, uh, uh, check in with Emphis Nest cases, they're empty. His when, cases are empty. No, but hold on, but then Beckett goes, but I knew that you would think that I would know yeah. that you would double-cross it. <laughs> I knew that you would know that I would know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> shit goes down, Emphis Nest's people take out all of Dryden's men, uh, which means that the real Quaxium is actually in there with them. Little twist, uh, Beckett blasts the guards and takes off with Chewie and, uh, and the Quaxium. I do want to say that the uh, Dryden's no, uh, is it Dryden's guards or, or the black with yeah. sort of the gold yeah. lining? Yeah. Really cool helmets. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of like maybe Beetleborgs or VR Troopers. Oh, One of those. Yeah. It's just a Beetle cool Borgs. like '90s looking yeah. helmet. So, I also liked Beckett shooting the two guards that had guns and being like, "I like being the only guy with a gun in the room." So I'm gonna take yeah, this shit, cool. Bookie. Come on. It's just it's interesting because I I understand why Beckett does this because he sees an opportunity and he's an opportunist right. But at the same time, we've set up for the past two hours that if you fuck everyone's got a boss. If you fuck over Dryden Voss, Crimson Dawn's just gonna come kill you. So why would you not just be like, I'm gonna kill everyone, and give this to Dryden Voss, and then just be good? I get paid, and we're good. Mm. Why would you? You know what mm, I mean? Mm, we just mm. two hours. Don't fuck this guy over, or our, we'll be running for the rest of our life. And now he's like. I guess I'll fuck. Well, now that Why didn't you just do it earlier? In the room. Yeah, I don't know. It was weird. Anyway, uh, Dryden tries to make a deal with Han, but Han wasn't born yesterday. They fight, and Kira intervenes and disarms Han. Uh, once you're a part of Crimson Dawn, you can't leave. But she, but she double crosses Dryden and stabs his ass dead. 
But no, this whole part I was just like, dude, Han, you have a fucking gun. Uh, right. What? <laughs> There's a point where Drydus is like gotten knocked over like a couch. They're a solid Han, thirty minutes away. Han is just hiding over yeah. the couch. It's like, Han, you have a gun. You have a ranged weapon. Yeah. He's got knives. Shoot you, him. You could, Shoot him. You could easily hold up. Like, there's things in the room that you could hold up to prevent being thrown a dagger that may or may not even penetrate your skin. We yeah, don't. Really, we don't like, really know. What if it's, it's just like, a laser like dagger. I don't know. He just he was so on the defensive. It reminds me of Jason Garrett with the Dallas Cowboys. You know what I mean? Now, you have you, a lead in the fourth God, quarter. You go. You go. You step on the throat. You go for the All win. The you, Way. You could quit going for field goals, Jason Garrett. Fire him. I'm tired of this stupid regime. Anyway, she tells Han to go after Chewie while she hangs back. And she says, I'm going to rob this. Yeah, I'm just going to hang back. I'm going to get shot. these jewels right here. And Han's like, right, well, just grab them. Are They're you right sure? there. There's no one. Le- we, you could help me out and then we come back. There's no one left on this. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, no, no, no. You go I'm, ahead. I'm going to hang back. And he's like, are you sure? No, I'm hang back. I don't feel well. It's got a little, <laughs> I got a little, a little stomach thing. I'm just going to hang back in the hotel. And he's like, okay, cool. Sure. This can't pass. I'll see you in like five to ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, but what she's really doing is cutting the dead weight because there seems to be an opening at the executive level of Crimson Dawn. And you know what? That dope-ass pimp ring that Dryden Voss is wearing would look mighty good on this old hand. And she takes it off of him. And, it's, and I'm like, oh, it's one of those cool secret decoder rings that they had in The Last Jedi where they twist it and your symbol comes off. Except they twist it and it's just the Crimson Tide symbol, which looks kind of like a thermal detonator. Crimson Dawn. Crimson Tide. <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> Alabama, <Crimson> sir. <laughs> anyway, she puts the ring on the finger and it's great. And then she goes over the desk. And, and it's like, wow, this, this kind of feels good. Maybe I'll just uh, work it in here. Only problem, your boss is Darth Maul. And Darth Maul calls in. And he's like, what the fuck is happening? And she gives him the world's lamest, most generic story about how Beckett killed Dryden. And if, But I got here too late. And if I were there, I could have saved you. And he goes, well, I guess you're getting a promotion. And at no time does he use his extraordinary Sith abilities to suss out that she's lying through her fucking teeth. Because I'd have been like, I think you're lying to me. But I don't know. Let me let me consort with my my uh, my conciliary here. Hold on. So stupid. Why did he show her the lightsaber? It's so stupid. It's scary. Let me, let me ask you a better question. Why is he in this movie? This movie was like, we're fucked, and we need a wow moment that people are going to be like, I can't believe they did this, and it's Darth Maul. The most confusing thing ever to people that just watch the movies. I don't, which, to be I, honest, you yeah. need to kind of like like... If you're going to have Darth Maul in this movie, there has to be some type of explanation that explains how he's still alive. Or else people that don't understand the intricacies of the timeline are going to be confused as all shit. On top of that, even if you don't care about that, even if you're one of the people that are like, oh, you should watch the fucking shows and shit, make it an interesting thing. (laughs) Make it something that matters. Instead of just uh, Darth Maul's... Daenerys' boss now? And he's the and he's what the head the of fuck? Crimson Dawn. Why would he be the head of the fucking Empire? This is my other thing. Is like, if he's still alive, why would he be the head of a gang? He used to be the second in command of the fucking Empire. Well, I guess he doesn't want well, to fuck the with Darth Maul. That they, that like they right specifically now. like actually tackle. Um, but I, I, I agree with Well, these are questions as a person who hasn't watched the shows yeah. that I am very confused yep. about. Yeah. Why, if you were the other Darth, like, why wouldn't you go back to Emperor Palpatine and be like, I'm still around. Can you put me to work? This, this isn't yeah. me defending this moment because I agree. Like, this is a bad moment. And at this point, like, Darth Maul's story in the shows were told and they were great and we let him go at a perfect point. And even when I saw this the first time, I was like, fuck, why? What was, what's the point here? What's the goal? This is just me, like, just shouting out, there's cool stuff that they do in the shows if you're interested in that kind of shit to check out. Me, uh, uh, watching this moment, I don't even necessarily hate the Darth Maul's there. I think just the most, the, the, there's really nothing I hate about this movie except for the lightsaber thing. I think it's just so <laughs> egregious and so... Uh, it's like, hey, hey, forgot. fucking audience, you stupid idiots in the crowd. It's Darth like, Maul. Here's the double lightsaber that you remember. It's Just so, in case you didn't know, it it's, makes no it's a little different now. It makes zero it, I mean, And him getting up and seeing the Not that it makes zero sense. Legs? It's just so you like. See, it starts off with the mechanical it, yeah. legs. It's, but it's you can barely in, tell the mechanical legs. Bad decision. It's an insane decision. Yeah. I can't believe it's really in a theatrical Star Wars movie. Yeah. Like, it makes no fucking sense. You have to imagine they were setting up Crimson Dawn and they were setting up Darth Maul to do something with Obi Wan if they were going to make a movie out of that. But I, they just, I guess they didn't. I, I feel I mean, like they I were don't setting think up. That's the case. I, think, I feel like they were. They have canon TV shows and comics yeah, and stuff that, that is fair. have told us the story of Darth Maul. We know what happens. Yeah, and, and that's like, why it's lame, man. It's yeah. like we got this really cool arc with him and like his story and the aftermath of everything that happened to him after Episode One, and it's really fucking dope. And then like you know, I'm yeah, gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch that shit. Yeah, there, there's yeah. you know, there's a big gap yeah, in too. between 
what he does in Clone Wars and what he does in Rebels, but the gap is still kind of connected, you know? I didn't need the fucking filler in between of what he's doing in between these two shows. His story was told. Fucking move on from it. Fair point. Uh, Han catches up to Beckett. Who knows the score? Did Kira kill Dryden? It was never about you, Han. She's a survivor. And he's like, yeah, I'm getting that. I'm getting that. Uh, and he goes, you know what your problem is? You think everyone's like you. And then Beckett goes, no, nah, not you, kid. You're nothing like me. I hope you're still paying attention because now I'm going to tell you the most important. Bang! And Han just fucking shoots. First. I think it's awesome. I like it. Yeah, awesome. I like that. I like the best that. Moment. It is Han the first. best moment. And, and he, like their little just, conversation too, they have immediately after. I was like, oh yeah. cool. He's like, a smart move, man. I would have yeah. killed you, Han. I would have killed you. And he was, I, I know, it. motherfucker. Like I get it. I learned. This is actually character development. I learned now, not to trust everyone. Now imagine all this, Zac Efron. <laughs> just pitching that out there. Just is he shirtless? Shirtless the whole time. I'm, in. I'm <laughs> fucking in. No shirt, yeah. Uh, as he holds Beckett's dying hand, Dryden's uh, pimp yacht takes off with Kira at the helm, and, and, uh, he, and Han finally realizes, man, she's a dick. Uh, they give the coaxium to the freedom fighters. Uh, it's the blood that brings life to something new, a rebellion. And it's like, did you just start Wait, the rebellion? You, yeah, hold on, did you just watch uh, Rogue One? Yeah. Or were you just like, oh, they added that one like that. Well, let's just let's do it too. In the novelization of uh, Hol- Holo, Han, Solo, Solo, a fucking Star Wars story. Mm-hmm. Um, the Coaxium Verge, or whatever the fuck they have, uh, they end up giving to <laughs> Coaxium awesome. Verge. So, I'm calling it that from now on. Sagarera. Can we go back and start this again so I can make that reference? Sagarera and Jin or so. Mm-hmm. But that's not in the cool. movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jin or so. She goes, You could join us. And Han, but Han's not buying it. He's like, Maybe, uh, maybe some, she's like, Maybe somebody will feel different. And he goes, Don't hold your breath, kid. And it's like, don't call me kid. You're only like four years older than me, first off. And second off, we know like a year from now you join the rebellion. Remember that? Uh, she gives Han a vial of Quaxium for his troubles. And like the degenerate he is, he goes straight to Lando in the gambling table. Uh, they rematch, and Han goes all in. And then Lando tries to cheat, but not this time. Because Han, <laughs> Lando, sorry. I that word. Uh, but not this time, because Han is hip to that, and he outsmarts him, and he wins the Falk, and the, the Millennium Falcon fair and square, or cheater by cheating. I don't know. I and love this. this. Definitely cheating. I don't love of this because I, how did he get that thing out of his hand? I well, love like, it. It's quick they, as shit. He like grabs hands and like I feel like it's Lando's the same like, kind of hug that they. Yeah. Weirdly oh, is that, what, is that how he got it? Okay, yeah, I missed Empire. that part. Great. It's the reference, yeah, to Empire yeah. of like, eh, I'm pissed off. Yeah, 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 yeah. a little hug. Okay. I, yeah, I again. But I, like, how did Lando not check later? He was just like, no, it's still there. I love it. I, I, I don't, don't know. glance at it because then people are gonna know. I think I think it's cute as shit. Okay, I, I, I apologize. Like I missed that part. That was clever. Then uh, they rematch. Han, uh, Han wins fair and square, and then gets on the bridge of the Millennium Falcon with Chewie as his co-pilot, and they chart a course for Tatooine. As they engage the hyperdrive, we get one last shot of those fucking dice. <laughs> the end. <laughs> it literally ends on the fucking dice. Hey man, they're feeling Circle lucky, wide. dude. Skidoo, 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 skidoo. <laughs> Remember these? For audio listeners, he is angrily He's shaking. Angry. <laughs> okay, the most it's important time for thing. Some you choose reviews. to end your fucking whole movie on a final shot of these. These stupid, <laughs> nonsensical, non-important fucking dice. Seven syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the person last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret. And haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku. In review. Everybody, the these fucking are dice. dice. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form. Uh, just like DH Canada did. Han is all alone. Recruiter names him Solo. Lonely ass bitch. It's <laughs> <laughs> easy. Uh, it's right there. Let's see. Rob Salt says Han sure loves dice. Lando horny for droid. <laughs> Crush them metal lips. Ew, <laughs> oh my yes. god. Yes. Oh my god. How much lube do you think to, you need to make that fucking metal soft? Holy hey, they make it work, man. Jesus Connor Strong says Solo wasn't good. A new Han wasn't worth it. Darth Maul was pointless. And then Monty Joe ends this one just saying Lando lost a bet. Khaleesi is Maul's new pet. Han and Chewie get wet. 
<laughs> that was great. <laughs> that was <laughs> expertly done. Yes, there we go. Uh, what else we got in this bullshit show? Ragu Bagu? Ragu. What's up, guys? We're ranking the bad guys in the Star Wars universe. I'm joined. I'm your host, Andy Cortez. I'm joined by everybody. You can follow us on Ragu Bagu Vids, even though I don't have access to that account anymore. But follow us anyway. Period? Maybe I'll get it back. No, I do. It's just I got a new phone. I haven't logged in in a while. Got it. Got yeah, it. It's, it's just one of those so, things. So we're... we're Bring back the vision from Solo. <laughs> the vision from Solo is here. That's right. That's so right. That's great. And, and I, I think he's great. I, I, I think he's. I think Ryan Ross is, cool, is a man. really fun antagonist. They did a good job making him seem like, like how high though on the Andy, list. Andy, what, what, what is the ranking right now? All right, so we're gonna go worst to best. Yeah. We're gonna worst to best. Dooku, Django, Anakin, and uh, CG from Attack of the Clones. Sidious and Vader from Revenge of the Sith. Maul and Palpatine from Phantom Menace, Darth Vader from, uh, or no, General Tarkin and Darth Vader from New Hope, Kylo and the First Order from Force Awakens, Kylo and Smoke <laughs> from Last Jedi, <laughs> yep. uh, Krennic from Rogue One, number two is Vader's Choking Hand from Empire, and number one is uh, Boba Fett and Palpatine from Return of the Jedi. I say right below New Hope. Yeah, I put them below I feel New like Hope. Krennic. I agree. Below Krennic. Below Krennic, so yeah. number four above Kylo and and Smoke. That's that's where I think I would put it. I would Three. disagree. I would yeah, put him way too. from lower. He's, but he's listen, good. He's a yeah, generic, like but, but his character is a generic ass bad guy. He the only reason it why well. it's elevated is because Paul Bettany is the that's actor. True. Right? Yeah, that's everything right. he does that, in the, let's put it out. He gets got very easily. He and he, also he's kind of not enough of the movie. He's yeah. not doing enough, I think, for yeah. it to, to be ranked. I guess high, but I really like is, him. A lot of it is the performance and a lot of yeah. There's no awesome motivation. Like Ben Mendelsohn like as Krennic was an awesome actor in an awesome role that's in 50% of the movie. And he's got, he really is, feels like a well-rounded character. This is just Paul Bettany having a Sunday drive. And I'll tell you, I'll drive with him. Oh, yeah. But it's just out for a Sunday. All it's right. not every day. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, uh, we're putting him at number seven, Vision from Solo. There you go. There right. you go. Good mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. Great. Now it is time to rank the Star Wars universe. The current rankings, number one, The Empire Strikes Back. Number two, A New Hope. Number three, The Force Awakens. Number four, Rogue One. Number five, Return of the Jedi. Number six, The Last Jedi. Number seven, Revenge of the Sith. Number eight, The Phantom Menace. Number nine, Attack of the Clones. I remember leaving Solo in theaters and just being so angry at it for just not needing to happen and answering questions I didn't want in ways I didn't care. Mm -hmm. And I was already kind of like down because The Last Jedi and all this stuff. And I remember being like, sure, it works as a movie. And sure, there's some fun parts. And the Kessel Run's fucking awesome and all that stuff. But I was like, I think this is my least favorite Star Wars movie because I have no interest in watching this again. And I have not seen that movie since we first saw it in theaters. Did I enjoy it more this time? I did. I did. I'd be crazy to say it's the worst Star Wars movie. No. I would be crazy to say it's worse than Attack of the Clones. That would be crazy. But I don't know where I want to put it because I feel like Last Jedi is better. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. 100%. There's no fucking... The, the I, I, strong moments of Last Jedi, way better than this movie. The, but yeah, the Ray Luke is, stuff alone is awesome. Is it Revenge of the Sith. Phantom Menace. That's a question. I don't know, man. That's a question. I, I don't know. That's an interesting question you're asking, Tim. I'm glad you're asking it. <laughs> does someone, does someone want to present a counterpoint? It's it's crazy because like Phantom Menace at least has the throne uh, the what is it called dual the dual fates. fates because that's a cool moment. I, I but like I I think this cannot go below the prequels uh, only same. because I think so much of the prequels are I mean we have to remember that we just watched them and so much of them are terrible so movies. terribly Horrible. done. Like uh, on on such a low level, almost of a comically just, bad level, yeah, almost like yeah, a Saturday Night Live absolutely. parody level. Absolutely, this never felt like that to me. This again, very uh, very middle of the road movie yeah. for me, uh, where it never did, it didn't do anything super great and super terrible. Here's what it did though, Randy, it made Han Solo not cool. Mm. It also right, Game dice, Steve. yeah. He's and like I, I feel like that to me is something that it that it They're did. Cute. That's a big sin, and it's yeah. an, it's an it's active sin where it's like that seems like a hard thing to yeah. do, and For yet they did it. But uh, remember, the prequels made Star Wars not cool. Fuck. So there is right. that. Fuck. It made yeah. every character in Star Wars not <laughs> That's cool. That's a great counterpoint. Holy no. shit. Yeah. It made Darth Vader not cool. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. For no. Sure. Yeah, 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 my hey. sentiments exactly, Vader. Why would have yeah, to happen? I, I think that the right place to put it is number seven yeah. and have so. the prequels underneath them. 
Because it's just... I think it's such a big gap, though. Like, yeah. if, if we were to put decimal points here, <laughs> like, you know, I would put, like, a lot of decimal points between six and seven because I think The Last I Jedi know. is a much better movie than I this agree. movie. I, I feel like I'm more down to rewatch Revenge of the Sith than I am to watch Solo again. Me too. And, like, I think that that, like, that really is where it's, like, does it go at seven or eight? <sighs> see, to me, I just, I don't... I could I could see the argument for either. I would argue this gets like one little point above Revenge of the Sith, just for the fact that like this had actually some decent acting in it. We had Paul Bettany, which was actually a yeah. pretty cool character. We had Woody Harrelson, Lando. cool character. Tandy Newton was great at the beginning of it. Lando, I thought Colin was great. Clover. The supporting roles in this, I think, are strong. I think parts of the movie are shot okay. Some of them are shot way too dark. Um, but they use a lot of practical sets and stuff like that, which I think gets a little bit of a, a nod for me. The pimp yacht was dope. Uh, the speeder bikes and Fisness's st- uh, crew looked cool. The galaxy and, or, or the, uh, the 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 chasing the, the whole Kessel Run sequence. I yeah, think was, was really cool. Well, I see. Neat. I would say I think the train sequence is a little bit more compelling oh, than the Kessel Run sequence, just because cool. the Kessel Run sequence. I was like, we are really stretching for trying to make this cool because it's not. It to me, I'm like, I feel like they achieved it. I feel like they almost achieved it. I at no point did I like watching this a second time. I'm like, oh god, this scene's happening still. They're trying to. It's it's it just didn't work for me 100. percent But some cool visuals there, uh, some cool sound effects, and I just if this had had a different person as Han, I think it would have ranked a little bit more highly. Um, but, but I still didn't. I still think that. But again, at least it had the four characters that I, that of note. Name me one character, one character, to Revenge of the Sith that's actually an interesting, well rounded character that that the actor actually elevates that character. Obi-Wan? Palpatine. Nope. Palpatine? I think no, Palpatine. No, no fucking yeah, way. Come on. Ian He's McDermott, should, dude. Yeah. Terrible. Him revealing himself. Terrible? And... Bad. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. It's well, fucking that terrible. That wasn't great. Yeah, no, that wasn't great. You know, like yeah. to me, so to me, like, here's the thing. To me, Solo feels like a bad Star Wars movie, it, but it still feels like a Star Wars movie. Barely, but it still feels like the fabric of everything that I know and love about Star Wars is there. The prequels really just don't feel right. Visually, Acting characters, they all just feel like generic. They're, they're not, void they're of like magic. The, they're like the Ghostbusters to the real Ghostbusters. They're void cartoon. of magic. Yeah. Yeah. They just don't have it. And like to me, that's why they're always going to rank lowest on the list. And I, I, I buy all that. For me, though, you're talking about the characters of Solo being the things that, that rise it above. Qui Gon Jinn. Well, the acting. I like him I mean. a lot, and the acting is better. It's the acting's like, better in Solo. Straight up. Yeah, but not the characters. There's, there's, the a, there's a heart right? to. I, I've even looking just at Phantom Menace. There's a heart to it that I feel like Solo doesn't have. Is there? is there? I think so. Yeah, I, I feel like, when like I like, they made choices that I do not agree with, and like God, it's, the prequels are fucking bad, and they're like they're atrocious movies in a way that Solo works as a movie. But it's so hard for me to, it's so hard for me to see the 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 prequels as anything other than just like one big tech test, with George Lucas going. I wonder if I can actually film like six hours of movies on green screen. Let's see. That's all those things smacked to me about. And like, I really feel really bad for the actors there because they, ha- again, a, a perfect example to me is like Hugh McGregor, great actor. Natalie Portman, great actor. Guy that played Palpatine, great actor. Samuel L. Jackson, great actor. Did any of them have any good moments in any of the prequels? No. Liam Neeson is Qui Gon Jim. To- everything's flat and stale. And it- and that's unfortunate. At least in this, we're like, oh, we have the potential for cool stuff. I thought you and I thought you and McGregor is probably the best part of the prequels. Uh, uh, acting I feel like in the first movie, in <laughs> Phantom Menace, like <clears throat> I don't remember him being that bad, but he is, you know? They're all pretty bad. Yeah. I feel like you and McGregor is one of those uh things where we all stood by him because we love him so much. Yeah. And, but rewatching it, it's like, oh fuck, even he was bad. Yeah. His beard. And again, I don't think it's their fault. <laughs> I think beard. the directing was their <laughs> fault. Oh, the, like, the directing you know, over, yeah. the, yeah. the production yeah. overall, like all of the, all the elements that went into that, unfortunately conspired against those actors. And to a degree it happened here in solo as well. Whereas I think there's a lot of interestingly bad choices made in this. And I think that's because of the the misdirection of changing up the directors midway through and really not having a clear vision all the way through. And again, I do think the Han Solo character was was horribly miscast. Um, but I think the other character elevate it to a level that at least gets it quasi watchable whereas the prequels are just like what how could you possibly have thought any of this was a good idea yeah. like it's mind numbingly dumb but i mean but most we just time. spend 2 hours talking about how mind numbingly dumb mind numbingly dumb the decisions are in this where this yeah, movie does feel like a parody like this movie feels like a parody of them taking the challenge of like how can we over explain everything to the point that when the next thing is explained as an audience, we are taken out of the movie where stop. we're just like, yeah, they're stop. actually explaining this. Yeah. I, I, the, the where I give solo points is that again, the the prequels all have the room level badness to it. The prequels have the moments where it, it feels like you're watching the movie The Room, where again, it is comically yeah. bad. 
there, there are there's lines of dialogue and acting that just feels like a fucking joke. And this movie never felt like that bad. It never that felt level that bad. of terrible. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it I, did feel like a joke, though. Yeah. It didn't feel that level. See, but these the prequels were comically bad. This was just bad. Yeah. I don't know what's worse at this point. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's true. But <laughs> this movie's not in any way, shape, or form good. And it's boring. Yeah. But. I, f- I mean, I guess we're, I, I honestly feel like we're splitting hairs because I don't give a shit if we put this at. Well, it's not. I mean, that's the point. Of the, 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 the discussion here. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm saying in my own brain, I'm like, I'm going back and forth even as to whether or not this should be above Revenge of the Sith. God, it's um, just funny trying to go through my mind of Revenge of the Sith and like, what scenes are better? And it's just like, I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't like the one scene where he kills the younglings. I don't like. See at it, le- yeah. Like, I feel like that's a scene that builds a little. But it's like, I, I feel like this movie. See this the the scenes in this movie are so forced and such bullshit where it's like I don't know if like <laughs> there. there's too many scenes here that, that like are, you know it's just, really they're overall so bad. Yeah, I know. I know it's hard. Yeah. It's hard because we are we are we are comparing what something about you, bad to something worse. Yeah, Barrett, Barrett, you got to be the deciding vote on this. Man, I just I have a fun time with <laughs> this. Man, no, right. I've seen some shit. Like, um, <clears throat> yeah, like I get the uh, a lot of the problems that everybody has, uh, like. The first time even watching it, the way he gets his name, the way they kind of ignore that later on, the Darth Maul reveal, little things here that I, I felt were like, all right, like what Big the fuck things. are we doing? Um, little things to me, like it, I, I think overall and like what the movie like was, and uh, I have a fun time with this movie. I see a lot of the actors having fun in this movie, and that's like where I'm on the ride for. Um, like it, it didn't, it didn't have a purpose, and like I get that, and again, I get the complaints everybody has about this movie i'm just having a fun ride it has a like if this was just a three episode arc in rebels like i'd be fucking down for it i know that doesn't make a good movie but like that because i'm into those shows like that's the vibe that this movie gave to me so i'm like yeah all right i'll take it like whatever um so that that, that's my take on it um that's why i felt most bad when it was over and i was like Man, I wish the Mandalorian was like this. <laughs> and I don't even love him. The box yeah. set so low. And like, because of like the weird ranking and like all of our different things, like I like this movie more than Rogue One. I, I went on my piece on Rogue One a couple weeks ago. I don't need to really uh, further that. But yeah, I would definitely have it below Return of the Jedi, like below all the uh, all the other stuff, uh, just because yeah, it, d- it doesn't really stand out. But I still have like a really really fun time with it. So that's my take. It's above the prequels for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right. It's time time to vote. Who thinks it's better than Attack of the Clones? Raise your hand. We all raise our hand. Ah, it's a good movie. Who thinks it's better than <laughs> The Phantom Menace? Raise your hand. We all raise our hand. Some great parts. Who thinks it's better than Revenge of the Sith? Raise your hand. All of us except Kevin. Raise our hands. The new ranking of the Star Wars universe. Number one, Empire Strikes Back. Number two, A New Hope. Number three, The Force Awakens. Number four, Rogue One. Number five, Return of the Jedi. Number six, Last Jedi. Uh, number seven, Solo, A Star Wars Story. Number eight, Revenge of the Sith. Number nine, The Phantom Menace. And number ten, Attack of the Clones. We'll be back next week with Star Wars Episode 9, oh, Rise of Skywalker. Go. I can't wait. As much as I am terrified, I'm also I'm not equally terrified. as excited. We know we're getting with this one. It's going to be good. Oh, you want my dice? I have a whole bucket of them over here. I give them to all my women. <laughs> they, they can't uh, make to order just one. You have to order oh, at least gotcha, 10. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Until those next stupid week. pens. Have a dice away. day. <laughs>